hi, I'm Ellis George, uh, play Courtney Woods, and you're listening to the Five-ish Fangirls podcast. The Tedges is great continue all the way to episode 439 of the Five-ish Fangirls podcast. And this week... We are going to share the love, the love of the library. Welcome everyone to this week's episode of the Five-ish Fangirls podcast. So glad you could join us. Let's start off like a new York with Virgil Dable and see who's joined us this week. This is Brittany in Belvedere. This is Chrissy in Salt Lake City. And this is Rachel in Indianapolis, Indiana. Hello, everyone. Hello. Hello. How how is everybody? Yeah. <laughs> so you just we just had our convention session about daylight savings. So <laughs> yes, we're all dying. We hate it. We don't want it anymore. Yep. Please stop. In the words of the doctor, I don't like it. I don't like it. Yeah. Leave the time like, oh, you've changed your clocks. Day. I don't like it. <laughs> Leave the time traveling to the experts. Come on. Exactly. Right? Exactly. All right. Well, first up, we need to do the news. So we got the, the we little have a, bit. have a decent amount here. Yeah. So we got our uh, first look at uh, the Marvel series Echo. So that will be dropping in January, January 10th. We're going to get all of it in one fell swoop. So at least that's the way I'm interpreting all episodes of Marvel Studios Echo, a new original series streaming January 10th. So, <laughs> But it's going to be on Disney Plus and on Hulu. So if you've got a Disney Plus profile that you don't want to set to mature audiences, I guess that gives you the option to watch on Hulu instead. Because if you're going to want to watch on Disney Plus, your profile has to be set to mature. Um, But it's only going to be on Hulu until April. So mm. after that, you'll have to go to Disney Plus. So you have to change it anyway if, if you want to rewatch. Yes. So, but that's exciting. Glad that is coming. Um, and then this was exciting to pop up on my YouTube feed. We're getting a new <laughs> Miyazaki movie yeah, called we, The I, Boy I, and I, the Heron. It looks beautiful. It looks good. It, it looks so good. The synopsis also, is. Mahito, not 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 the drink. This is with an H, not a J. Uh, <laughs> a young twelve-year-old boy struggles to settle in a new town after his mother's death. However, when a talking heron informs Mahito that his mother is still alive, he enters an abandoned tower in search of her, which takes him to another world. Ba -ba -ba. Yep, yep. This 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 has this has Miyazaki written all over it. Mm. Just. And I mean, it's kind of a running joke at this time. How many times is he going to retire? But gosh, we love it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, don't ever retire or, you know, take care of yourself. Eat your vitamins. Yeah. <laughs> Meet me as Aki Sam. Yeah. You're an artist. Yeah. Um, and of course, there is the version in Japanese, but then there mm -hmm. is a, 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 a version that will have. Uh, you know, American voices, English, English dub, yeah, English voice, yeah, English voices, um, and uh, interesting people. Some of these people I don't know who they are. Some of them I do, like Christian Bale. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I think, which I think is, he's playing Mojito's dad would be my yeah. guess. And uh, he has been in a Miyazaki. He was Howl, I think, because I remember Jared telling me that story of, or the story of a, uh, um, 
Christian Bale um, is saying like, I don't care. Like I want to, they're telling his agent, I want to be in a Miyazaki movie. I don't care what it is. Mm -hmm. Get me in there. I'm pretty sure it was Christian Bale. And, uh, um, <laughs> and then he ends up playing Howl, who is like the, the, it's Howl's moving castle crying out of, mm -hmm. you know, the main character. Mm -hmm. Um, so, so yeah, so that's, so that's pretty cool. I, yeah. I like it. I'm, I'm looking forward to it. I hope, now does it say anything about, um, uh, theatrical release or is it just going to be, uh, it's right now, like on Rotten Tomatoes, it says where to watch. It says in theaters. Okay. So, so okay. So it is, so it will be in the theaters. In, uh, in the apparently US. some critics have already seen it though. And they, they uh, okay. love it. So it's got 98% fresh already okay. just based on All right. well, critic yeah. feedback. So <laughs> it, it's already been released in theaters in Japan obviously yeah. and uh worldwide was YouTube. december 8th okay so so yeah yeah okay but, so yeah. we'll get we'll probably we'll, we'll get theatrical which is great because not much going on in the theaters right now <laughs> mm -hmm. like, hey I take, I, new miyazaka I, movie I, why not give, 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 give me give me give me give me mm-hmm <laughs> That's awesome. I'm I'm yeah. excited. Yeah. Uh there's some more of this uh more of this cast. Uh Dave Batista. Uh Gemma Chan, William Defoe, Mark Hamill, <laughs> Robert Pattinson, and Florence Pugh, among others. Quite a few Marvel actors in this yes yeah okay yes it was it was um christian bale who was who was howl in howl's moving castle so yes he was the one who was like i don't care like told it that his, his agent said i don't told him i don't care get me in a movie, mm -hmm. movie i don't care if i have to play like random extra background extra number one mm -hmm. number six and there he was mm -hmm. so that's cool that's cool he's coming back for another one mm -hmm. Which is like funny because I just watched uh, Newsies over the weekend. <laughs> so it's like, oh, really, really young Christian Bale singing and dancing about being the king of New York. So uh, <laughs> that was amusing. Uh, so, um, and then uh, the folks at Netflix uh, apparently have decreed that today was Stranger Things Day. Uh, so we okay. got all sorts of 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 goodies. Uh, some of it's just kind of I think they were just kind of like, hey, remember, this is a thing that you like um, and it will be coming back eventually. <laughs> <laughs> or something like that. Um, but um we did get some announcements which is which is cool nothing about the the the, the, you know, the the final season yet uh but um they have announced that um we are getting a stranger things vr game it would be available at the end of the month on meta quest <laughs> but you're playing the game as vecna oh so interesting so yeah. so you're gonna you're gonna try to chase after people and and i guess and this is, is like the soul. story of of him becoming like the king of the episode you know the 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 kind of the the okay. top dog in the upside down all right so See how that goes but yeah i was like that's a plot twist if i ever heard one uh right? yeah and then, I'm jealous of our friends across the pond here. They are getting a play that is is canon because the Duffer Brothers are in you know involved. Um, called Stranger Things: The First Shadow. It's set in Hawkins in 1959. 
So it's a prequel. Yeah. No, and I have, I... it's it's essentially going to tell us the story of of the Creel the Creel family, essentially. Okay. So So now now I have the most important question that needs to be asked. Mm -hmm. Will there be singing and dancing? No, it's not a musical. It is a play. (laughs) But there are going to be apparently very (laughs) um, intense and um, uh, appropriate special effects. Okay. So. (laughs) I'm just, I was just picturing, you know, musical version of the Upside Down. I mean, I, I know, I know, we have Eddie Munson and doing Master of Puppets and all that stuff. And yeah. Like, you know, I, I'm like, I, I need a Demogorgon uh, Bollywood number. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because that would kind of be awesome. But you know, yeah. we'll take, I'll take, I'll take the non-musical. That's fine. Yeah. No, it it is a play. Uh, wow. not 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 a musical. We'll probably have to leave that. Um. Uh, ima- uh, imagination to like college humor or something uh all those right. folks <laughs> all right, all. Oh, wait, actually, I... if someone has not already done it yeah just out of sheer boredom uh it's been a long couple of years uh <laughs> Kinda, yeah. so uh but speaking of music, not musicals, but music, and I cannot believe that I'm living in the timeline that I get to say this, but this makes me so happy. We have new Beatles music. <laughs> Unless you've been living under a rock, we have a brand new Beatles song. I'm kind of tearing up. <laughs> Every time I think about it, I'm like, chills. I'm so excited. It's like, I can't believe that this is like oh, oh it's like with all the other crap and everything that we've had to deal with in the world i'm so glad this is a thing oh that i get to live to to see the day um, every once so, in a while the universe throws you a crumb it does mm-hmm. and i am totally here for it so there's a whole like mini documentary on the the official beatles youtube channel so you can see how this came about but tldr um we have peter jackson to thank essentially so um (laughs) but yeah uh the song is called now and then and um yeah i am so just like (laughs) i'm just giddy (laughs) like (laughs) It's like how 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 is this a thing? I'm so excited. So, um, yeah. If you if you haven't listened to it yet, go listen to it because it's just it's so wild. It's just it's so wild how this they were able to to pull this off. So, um, technology is a wonderful thing. Uh, in this case, so. But yeah. <laughs> that's cool yes that's cool uh and a book club update since we are in a new month so the book for this month is josephine and the argonauts and then the poll is up and the choices for december are extraction point rebellion at treasure island 10 days of christmas and rather appropriately considering he's coming back on tv celestial toy maker (laughs) <laughs> so go cast your votes yeah uh get get into the this month's title leave your comments and go forth and do book club things mm-hmm, mm-hmm. which Good. really scary to think that that's the last poll for this year <laughs> ah, don't remind me why did you have to say that oh I my goodness know. <laughs> i don't know either i was at i was at work today getting you know all my things done and stuff and i'm like oh crap we've got it and i was reminded in an email it's like we've got we've got to you know finish out our, our end of year budget and i'm like oh, okay because <laughs> i because you know 
if we don't spend all our money, it has to go back to to the system as a whole because there's stuff they gotta buy. Mm-hmm. Like, all right, make sure we've got all our stuff taken care of. Before. It has to go back to them. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's only, oh, it's never. yeah, I guess. So that is Zenus. We do have some feedback. Of course, we talk about a musical. We get a oh, whole block yeah. of text from Shalane. Uh, <laughs> so uh, she says, hey, girls, finally, we got to, t- got to Little Shop of Horrors. I think this is your sixth musical episode you talked about this year. And the last one of this year is what I think. <laughs> you can keep thinking of that, Shalane, but... Uh, You'd be wrong. Maybe maybe uh, don't put money on that, but you know. Yeah. Thank you for yeah. keeping track either way. <laughs> yeah. Then you'll be back next year. Oh yes, I mean there'll definitely be more next year. I thought you girls you were going to talk about that. hairspray this year since Rachel saw hairspray the tour because you girls talked about Lay Miz and Rachel saw Lay, the Lay Miz tour. Hairspray will come eventually. So I'm just I'm seeing I'm seeing a little something else in a couple weeks so <clears throat> anyway i watched about i watched about uh five i was about five or six when i first watched little shop of horrors the movie i think we rented it or watched it on cable at first i thought it was called little shop of horse <laughs> not horse <laughs> well when you're Here's... that when you're that young yeah you you hear things you hear sometimes you hear things wrong trust me. yes yeah and then when you I get to a certain a age, you got uh, uh, get to a certain age, and then you realize you really need to emphasize that it's Little Shop of Horrors. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So then I guess if she, well, unless that's just, I don't know. Because now that she said that, I'm like, well, I must have been older than I thought I was when I first saw it. Because I know we rented the movie when we saw the, the musical in the first month. But anyway, mm-hmm. that's neither here nor there. Years later, I watched. Yeah, years later, I watched the making of the Little Mermaid. Found out Alan Menken and Howard Ashman were the men behind Little Shop of Horrors. Fun facts: two friends of mine from college just did an episode on Little Shop of Horrors, and one of them also had knowledge of Dizzy like me. And they said that Little Shop of Horrors is what started the Alan Menken and Howard Ashman to come and work for Dizzy. Yes, we mentioned that too. They mm-hmm. said on their podcast that uh, the song "Somewhere That's Green" inspired the Disney Princess songs. Yep. <laughs> Also, I think Ariel's inspired by Audrey, and I I think the Greek choir were inspired for the Muses and Hercules, you think? But Ashman died before Hercules, yes, but that didn't stop Alan Menken. Uh, <laughs> also, go watch the Howard Ashman were- document on Dot- Disney Plus if you haven't seen it yet. Yes, you should. There's some re- there's some really good Disney history document documentaries on on Disney Plus, so which is a good place for them. Yeah. I'm still waiting patiently for an Alan Minkin and Howard Ashman episode. Yes, we will get to it, I promise. <laughs> My We're friends also on it. Yes, we can only do this once a week. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> My friends also explained that Ashman wrote a song for Latin that was cut and ended up on Broadway. Proud of your boy it was based on Ashman coming out as queer man to his mom, but Ashman did Beauty and the Beast, then Aladdin, and they rewrote Aladdin. Yes, they did. Because at first, out Aladdin's mother was supposed to be alive, and then they had the the song "Proud of Your Boy," which is on one of the anniversary DVDs. Because yeah, it's on the one they, I have. I just don't remember what, like that was because because anniversary it was. Yeah, because like it started with Beauty and the Beast when they added human again in mm-hmm. that one. Then they did one with Lion King. It was the Morning Report. And then the the Aladdin one, they didn't do a fully animated um, sequence for it. They just had like pencil, pencil mm-hmm. test drawing for it. So it's just, I think it's just an extra. So it's not like integrated into the movie. Yeah, but it is. Yeah, it's it just is on a, the special features. Yes, yes, because it's uh, because yeah, they showed the story. They showed the storyboards, and right, yeah, um, they made a, a fresh recording of the song sung by uh us. Uh, second second season american idol runner up clay aiken so <laughs> there you go um uh, also ashman had uh a beauty in the beast sweater 
I'm sure they had all sorts of 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 branded gear when they were working on those things. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, I have more. Gir- I have more to tell you, girls. I'll save when we get the little maybe an episode, an episode about Alan Macon and Howard Ashman. Fair enough. Going back to Little Shop of Horrors, my college town did Little Shop of Horrors at a theater com- at the community theater, but I didn't go see it because I was busy with school and I really wanted to go see it. I needed a trip to New York and see it. We all do. <laughs> I also just realized this is the third movie Rick Moranis you girls talked about after Ghostbusters and Spaceballs. <laughs> Next, Honey, I Shrunk the Kids? Maybe. Anyway, I thought also for your girls, we'll be talking about Nightmare Before Christmas after a little shot for the 30th anniversary, but girls have a week off. But you could talk about for Christmas, and it's also a musical, but I'll be patient for it. We appreciate your patience. (laughs) Going back with Little Shop of Horrors, the movie, the ending, uh, uh, ending with a a happy ending. (laughs) I watched the alternate ending, and I think the movie could would have not been good. I wish the ending of the stage play was a hap- was the happy ending. So you you agree with the focus groups then? Yeah, apparently. So are you yeah, girls planning fine. on doing another Halloween episode in April? I don't know. We, we don't plan that far ahead usually. <laughs> so here was so here here was, who was going to be in the canceled remake? Taryn Edgerton was Seymour. Scarlett Johansson was going to be Audrey. Chris Evans was going to be the dentist. Oh my. <laughs> yeah, I think it's good they canceled the remake of the film. I don't think it would have been good. <laughs> this is my, this is what I've noticed about Chris Evans since, um, since, since you know, he, 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 he hung up the shield for Captain Marvel. He's kind of been, yeah. the roles I've, I've, I've noticed he's been taking on have been kind of jerks for the most part um or jerks or just kind of not very likable characters and i'm just kind of like hmm are you trying to tell us something chris (laughs) well you know it's like it's like steve rogers was just so freaking nice that you know well yeah but it's like you know he's got some pent-up dickery that he just wants to get rid of i don't know <laughs> maybe maybe i i don't know i don't know although you know as a human torch he he wasn't like you know the that's the, true. the, the that's nicest true. guy so true true human torch he was a bit of a <clears throat> he was a bit of a jackass <laughs> so, yes a bit full of himself yes and some other words that we don't want to say in a pg-13 <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> I mean, he's with some not nice guys in some other movies. You ever seen Scott Pilgrim? <laughs> I hate Scott Pilgrim. I hate it. And that is and, and that he is only because that. I saw it. I saw it about ten years after it came out, and I was so over hipsters by then. And when I was told <laughs> this is what started it, I'm just kind of like screw that movie. Jared loves it, and he was like, "I'm really sad you don't like it." I'm like. Mm. Hey, we all we all we all have that one movie or two yeah. that we're just like oh yeah so like that is movie okay needs to be fired into the sun <laughs> dang i will help you well, send it as long show. as long as as long as i can also send along it's a wonderful life so <laughs> mm-hmm. that is my that is my uh that is my uh my bargain so <laughs> all right uh so that's shalane's feedback and we got some feedback from aaron this was really short his subject line was meh <laughs> hello wonderful five of shows so this might be my last message because you all may ban me for ban me for my next comment i hate little shop of horrors Heresy! Says <laughs> <Heresy! laughs> so a woman who just spent 30 seconds kvetching about this Scott Pilgrim. So. <laughs> no, no, Aaron, Aaron, you know what? It's okay. You are allowed to, to, we are all allowed to not like, to like or not like things as we will. 
Yes. So I won't I won't give you too much crap. I did have I, I think I, I may have mentioned this last week. I did have a roommate that I showed this to because I thought it was just gonna be an awesome Halloween movie and she's gonna enjoy it. She hated it too. So I'm like, okay, I get it. It's it's yep. it's a taste thing and you're you're totally fine. You are not banned yep. from, from writing to us. Yes. You, I've seen both the movie and the stage show and neither did it for me. I've always been amazed by the love for it. So it was interesting to hear all the discussions on the project. Take care, Aaron. Oh, we're not going to ban you, Aaron, because no. But thanks, you thanks for writing in. I'm I in some feedback anyway. Yes, yes. It, it, please continue to write in feedback. Uh, you're not you're not banned. If we were going to ban you, then for opinions like that, we wouldn't have a show because we'd have to ban ourselves. So. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like this how I've true. seen both Phantom of the Opera and Cats. I've not seen the Cats movie. I don't care to, but I have seen both <laughs> Phantom and Cats properly on the stage. I don't care for either. I so, I don't I I, watched, I felt I very the... just kind of eh about both. So so funny give me story. give me spam I... a lot any day over <laughs> Phantom of the Opera. I'm so sorry, all you Andrew Lloyd Webber fans. So. I a funny story. I watched this YouTube video. It's about like forty five minutes, an hour long. About and it, it is this by from a channel like that. This guy is like totally into musicals, and he's like, he's he's a music aficionado. He knows like you know all like how it all works in musicals mm-hmm. and music and stuff like that. And he was breaking down why the Cats movie didn't work and all these different things. And I've never seen Cats in any form or iteration. And the way he explained the story, I'm like, okay, that is a very interesting story. I don't think I could watch it and take it seriously with a bunch of people prowling around with with fur all over their bodies and they're acting <laughs> like cats. I just, I don't see that. I'm sorry. And the movie obviously doesn't help, but it made for a lot of fun uh, YouTube fodder. So mm-hmm. that was entertaining. <laughs> but, the, but the, you know... The, the songs are decent, but I'm just like, eh, it would probably be better if the cats were like yeah. animated, like you know, yeah. Aristocats or something. Like that. Yeah, <laughs> it was it was uh, funny because it's like you know we did that episode last week, and then like a, a couple days later, I was on TikTok, and in my for you feed popped up a clip of Corbin Blue, sit yo know, and um. I think it's Gemma Chan. Uh, <laughs> uh, oh, yeah. our, our, uh, they were doing uh, Suddenly Seymour on like Good Morning America or something like that. And uh, normally I'd be like, well, that's weird. Like, you know, because sometimes you know, you'll talk about something and suddenly I'll show up on your social media. But I'm on Broadway mm-hmm. talk a lot anyway. <laughs> so it wasn't that weird. So, <laughs> but yeah. So yeah, yeah. Just uh, give me spam a lot over anything, Andrew Lloyd Webber. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> to each their own. So yes, indeed. So yes, you can. You are allowed to like or dislike whatever it is that, mm-hmm. that you do. Yep. Because if we liked everything the same, where how could how could we have interesting conversations about about anything? Exactly. Like I right? said, we have to just ban don't, ourselves. Just, yeah, just don't take it personally, and it's all right. Yep. yep. We got something people need to learn. Anyway, mm-hmm. so moving on to this week's main uh, topic we know i'm very excited for november so a lot of people are in the middle of nanowrima and it's also getting cold so people are spending more time inside and stuff like that Mm -hmm. so not going to like properly go through the presentation that i give at conventions we're actually going to expand upon it but uh for those that are interested um uh i will we are recording i mean zoom records both the the screen anyway uh we just don't usually use that because it's just the the zoom screen but 
we'll have the PowerPoint open along with some other resources. So, you know, if you happen to go on YouTube, you can see some of the stuff. We'll also put links to a lot of the things as yeah. well in the show notes. And if you really want to see the PowerPoint, just send us an email. I can give you a link to it and you can you can see it, look at it yourself if you want. So um but yeah uh libraries are Woo-hoo. amazing <laughs> so, oh. and, and, and the, i mean Hi. that's not just that you know obviously uh yeah i'm a fan um mm-hmm. but uh it's one of those things where it's like like when i first moved to the area i live in now i think i got a library card and like hardly used it um and then you know life got i you know i I moved down here when i was still in high school so then you know i was in college and busy doing five million i was using like the university library for academic stuff i didn't have time for fun um uh and then uh the pandemic happened and of course my library closed for a while um but we started gold standard and I quickly realized that um, <laughs> that it was going to get very expensive very quickly renting these movies from like Amazon or wherever. Um, so when the library did reopen, I went and got a library card just so I could get the DVDs for the movies that i i needed to get for gold standard and since then i am in my i am at my local library at least once a week and 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 rachel with as many of those movies that you had to watch that you Mm -hmm. absolutely hated yes how how much worse i'm glad i did not pay for them i i spent money (laughs) on this no yes let the library pay for it because because somebody is going to like it. I'm sure yeah. there's like somebody out there in the Indiana library, public library system or whatever it is you guys have. I know yours is a bit more extensive than ours. Somebody out there is going to enjoy one of those. One of those. Yeah. They're going to want to watch it. So, yeah. So there you go. And the library is more than happy to spend money on things that everybody can share and and uh, so, so kind of what we wanted to do, or I, I well, because Rachel had talked about doing this um, presentation at one of the conventions in conjunction. Was that the one? Um, I have done or, it. Uh, I've done it at both pop cons this year and at okay. in conjunction. So okay. And I was like, well, because I, in my day job, I am a librarian. So I was like, well, could I, could we do this as a podcast topic? Because I wanted to talk about it from sort of the behind the scenes perspective mm-hmm. of what libraries Brittany do. Brittany worked in a li- library for a hot minute. Yeah, yeah she <laughs> yeah. did. She did. Because um, I want to talk about like how like the process of like doing programs, how things get purchased, mm-hmm. um, what other things we have, because yes, we are more than books. And I can't tell you how many times, and it's usually an, an older person who is like, or well, maybe not like, I don't want to say like elderly, like way old, but like somebody who's like, <laughs> oh, with ebooks and Amazon, are, those, are, are there are there really still books? I'm just kind of like, okay, come on, now you're just now I've you're got just two being... library books sitting right next to me right now. It's like, yeah, you're just being a dick. I'm sorry. <laughs> mm-hmm. I hope not. I hope I hope none of my bosses is. <laughs> no, it's funny, but, but no, there there are some things, but but it's like because there because yes, books are amazing and as, as, as we found out during the pandemic um it was like okay what do we do like what and and i know my system like we we were you know we're talking sort of behind the scenes like you know we we still want to be there we still want to offer things and we we worked really hard to be able to open even just on a limited basis and people would come in and say like oh we're so glad that you're open and, and like they could do curbside pickup or they could come in for like 15 minutes grab a few things and go especially families with young kids mm-hmm. and they were just like and and you know children I'm a children's librarian so we would put together like story time kits and things like that they could take home and still do you know still do some of that programming still have that even though we couldn't do our full slate of everything we do and also Jared um because uh, Jared was 
uh, a 40 hour librarian at the time. I was kind of furloughed because I was only part time right then, but I was still kind of keeping tabs on things. But he was kind of spearheading a project to do online Dungeons and Dragons because we have a lot of branches who ha- who host Dungeons and Dragons nights. So it's like, well, there, and you know, we, we did that as the podcast too, as mm-hmm. we're doing online D&D, we recorded it, but he was doing it. So we could use the website. Um, they, they started, some of the other team librarians started a Discord server. So it was like a place like the teens could virtually gather and then, you know, and then you know, do all those things because, you know, those kids or everything was online and it kind of kept going. So it was like there's a hangout spot um, and they still do online Dungeons and Dragons. In fact, the whole system has kind of done their own you know how they you know those done its own adventure setting and adventure module using the the fifth edition rules but Jared was that was like like even though we were closed he was still working full time cuz he was working on that mm-hmm. so in 2020 which was kind of awesome for us and for him and for the system as a whole so you know there are things like yes there is the physical building that you can go into and depending on how big your library system is, like our my library system, the Salt Lake County system has 18 branches. Plus we have, um, we do services at the jail. We have a, a reading room at the, um, at like our, our the low income clinic. That's, that's almost, well, it's not quite downtown, but it's on South Main. And then there's a reading room up at one of the um, ski, uh, ski resort towns, which is kind of cool. Um, and so there's, so there's different things we do, but as far as like, geek culture and pop culture uh is is concerned i mean and and i think i think a lot of geeks and nerds and whatever we want to call ourselves have discovered that the library is like is a valuable resource for everything and anything and everything you could want um as far as like oh i want to try this new show or you know this new book series or i haven't got caught up or in the case of my library system, and I know a lot of other library systems are doing this, we have, they, we call them create spaces, mm-hmm. which are, um, and, and, and it's not all branches. My branch doesn't have one, but the one that's just north of us does, because they're bigger. But they have a 3D printer. Uh, uh, there's, there's some of our branches. There's one that has a laser cutter. Actually, two of them have laser cutters. Um, mm-hmm. They have sewing machines. So, you know, you want to do that cosplay, and maybe you don't have a sewing machine, <laughs> or... I mean, because sewing machines are expensive, not to buy and to maintain. So if you're not going to be doing a ton of sewing, or maybe you don't have the room for it, well, come down to the library, you know, book, you know, reserve a little bit of, re- reserve a time, and come do it. Um, uh, Jared just came home. They were we were recording a podcast for our system, but other people will record their own podcast. We've got another branch that has a green screen studio. Mm-hmm. So any any kind of creative thing that you want to do, I mean I, I mean we've gotten 3D print requests for everything from like pieces for cosplay or you know little you know figures, and, and it's all I mean, and, and it's all basically free or bit or very low cost. And in the case of 3D printing and you know using the the, the machines and stuff, I mean there's a, a fee to kind of offset the materials, but it's like way cheaper than oh i need to go buy my own 3d printer and and the filament mm-hmm. and i don't know what i'm doing and blah 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 and they're sending and, it and off have, to one of the on yeah, like an online service yeah. where they print it for you and mail it to you that too so you just go pick it up and say oh here this is you know what i want to do and, and the and the branches that have dedicated create spaces they actually have someone on staff who is that's just what they do they just run mm-hmm. the maker space they the, the create space. They don't deal with the books. They don't deal with any other programming. That's their thing. That's the whole thing they do. And they help people with all the stuff that's in there. And, and mm-hmm. I've been to some of our newer branches to see, and I'm like, wow, like these are so cool. And it's, it's really neat, like what, what we've been able to do. Mm-hmm. So I really want to put a plug in for that. And I, and this is kind of becoming a thing all over the place is ours uh, you know, we had our yeah because my my local the one i go to did like a major remodel mm-hmm. after the pandemic uh I imagine that it would have happened before the pandemic and been done sooner mm-hmm. but still 
um oh. and yeah there's an entire like quarter of the second floor that's what they call the studio mm -hmm. and they've got large tables um to if you need to spread out to work on something but they also have um computers dedicated for things like just like audio or video editing they've got craft and stem kits that can be checked out uh, they mm -hmm. have a fully stocked AV room, um, and then occasionally they will have a like like a maker in residence for like a week, where somebody's like, oh wow, a, 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 a you know an expert on using like you know a laser cutter because <laughs> we have mm -hmm. one of those at, at my at my library, mm -hmm. and people could come in and ask this expert questions about that thing that they're an expert on. So, and so, like, even if there is, it happens to be a staff member that's knowledgeable, they are mm -hmm. now freed up to help other people. And you can just bombard yeah. the expert with all of their questions <laughs> and take up all of their time because that's what they're there for. Yep. Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, get get into those maker spaces. Just go in and play around with it because. Mm -hmm. Okay, and, they'll, I, and and yeah, yeah and they, they'll usually let you <laughs> unless something oh, yeah. Well, yeah unless there's like something scheduled going on which sometimes mm -hmm. they will you know like they'll have like a yeah you know open to the public you know come uh -huh, like craft open something or other open. yeah so yeah. but if the space is not being used odds are they mm -hmm. will just let you yeah. go ham yeah i mean see the way the way our system deals with it is because okay because every every branch has like rooms you can book for you know, mm -hmm. if it's a study room or if like you're gonna have uh there's a big meeting space so if you need to have a meeting or study session or we've had people come do bridal showers <laughs> in our big meeting room which is kind of cool um it's, it's just a public space um but 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 they treat we also treat our create spaces that way so it's like say you want to go go use the sewing machine well you know you find the branch that has a sewing machine and you book it the same way you would book a room. And so so it's kind of funny when I'm looking up somebody's room reservation and our, our system, our, our program we use to, to keep track of room reservations, because it's all in there. And the default is check all, so it'll show me everything in the system. So I like have so if I don't if I don't uncheck everybody and just you know select my branch, I'll have to scroll down through all the the, the podcast studio, sewing machine, the 3D printer, the laser cutter. And I'm like, okay, this is ridiculous. <laughs> but it's it's really cool that, that we do have all that stuff and we do it on kind of a reservation basis. But like you said, if nobody's using it, and it's the same thing with our room reservations, if someone shows up and say, hey, is there a quiet space I can, you know, go do a, a Zoom call in? And I'm like, oh, hey, mm -hmm. yeah, our, our conference room is available. No one's booked it for right now, so you can go use it. I just put them in the thing and in the in the system that's how we keep track of how how much is being used and if it doesn't get used then you know they look at those stats and they're like you really need this and i'm like but but ours gets used so mm -hmm. so that's great so and that and that's the thing that's the other thing i want to stress is there are so many resources and so many things we have um i know i'm kind of hopping around here this isn't quite in the order of the powerpoint but yeah, we like I said, we're like, just using that kind of as a yeah. so, base. So our, our <laughs> system, our system has uh, databases, which sounds boring, but when I say a database, um, it could be something like we have one that's called Creative Bug, which mm -hmm. is a subscription service that has just arts and crafts, and and it can be as something as simple as something you can do for for like your toddler or your young kids, or like oil painting, or it's like and it's like this step by step way. Of what of how to do it, and if you were to buy that subscription on your own, it would be a lot of money. But the library use, it pays for it, and we try to promote that we have it, and you access it through our website. So if you go to our website first, and I'm sure this is true of most library systems, and then you access it through there, they're like, "Oh, you're a library patron. Your library has a subscription to this database, so you can use it for free," which is so cool. And mm -hmm. I, I looked at some of the stats because, because we, libraries love statistics and I'm not really one to like get into 
Like, I mean, I'll look, I'll look like, oh, that number's bigger than that number. <laughs> There's a reason I'm a librarian and not a mathematician. But even I, as, I'm kind of a, as a math, kind of a math dummy, I can see like what's being used the most. And some of our databases, which are really cool, are not getting used. So, and, and we just had to get rid of one database that just wasn't getting used, but to be fair, it wasn't very user friendly and it's being replaced with something else. It's actually cheap, which is nice. Um, but yeah, yeah, Rachel brought up the slide here of the, uh, the things that your library card can get you and you'll want to check and make sure your system has it because mm -hmm. we've gone through yeah, phases it's, it's, where we, this is, this is yeah. not, this is not every library system no, across the board. No. So this is not expensive. Although Libby is very, is, is almost universally used because Overdrive has bought, they're like the Disney of, of library service, <laughs> yeah. online library yeah. services. They bought everything. They bought one click digital, which was all audiobooks. So they, they like, basically tripled their their audiobook offering which was kind of cool um yeah. but we went i a, love a, libby yeah it's what my my favorite thing about libby and this is kind of you know and, and again depending on where you are because we have the salt lake county library system which is what i work for and then we also have the salt lake city library system two different things but i still have my salt lake city account which is tied to my county card and I can hop back and forth between their two Libby things. So even though I'm not, um, I don't live close enough to the city library anymore. And so I don't check out physical books. I still check out all the digital stuff. And they have mm -hmm. some stuff the county doesn't have. The county has stuff that the city doesn't have. So it's nice to double dip. So if you can do something like that, if you have multiple um, library systems in your area that you can that you can dip into, totally do it. I do it all the time. Um, uh, and we we had a and like we had Hoopla several years ago, and then we had to not have it, not because nobody was using it, but because Hoopla has this weird thing where if like for like you, a library is charged for every checkout that a patron has, so we actually had to get rid of it because people were using it too much, which I think <laughs> is silly. Because no and, kidding. And that's the one that, and so I'm like, come on, like people are actually using it, they're liking it, and they had to like, no, we can't have it anymore because because they have audiobooks, uh, but they they have movies, they have audiobooks, and I feel like there's something else, they have music, I think. Uh, but yeah, people were just listening to audiobooks on it, which is great, but it was costing us way too much money, and I was like, that is so dumb, and it's just mm -hmm. the way Hoopla is set up, and there's not much we can do about it. But That's we got kind back, of the. We, point is I if know. it's being you used want, a lot you, then you want because i have to use this yeah. stuff because i've seen i'm on the the mm -hmm. the library's reddit uh -huh. and you will see the occasional person that's all like is it okay that you know i'm only borrowing like digital books or it's like Absolutely. you know is it okay that i'm doing so many interlibrary loans and they're like yes that's what it's here that's for because that here it, for you were talking about you, you know you're yeah. having to do your your budget and it's like that's how yeah. you can justify your budget yes so <laughs> so, so here, here's my thing because i i do have a budget and, and because my library system's so big and every so it's very I don't want to say micromanage because that's not the real, the, the right term, but it's so big. We have so many people doing so many different things, but it's all similar. And our, our system, and I think a lot of systems are doing this, are going to what's called central selection, or we call it acquisition. It's basically that there's a department of people that all they do is buy new stuff. And it also, and that also um, folds into like the digital things. And every once in a while, they'll do a training or some kind of, presentation or whatever so we hear from them a lot and they talk about all the time they talk about like you know they'll they'll look at you know how many holds something has and if it's got a really long hold list they'll buy another copy if, if they can but because they're like they would rather that money go to something that people are using and mm -hmm. i feel the same way when i'm buying in my collections and i i do mostly children's stuff so i do like the early readers and some some nonfiction for kids stuff um and then they like uh, the immediately they say okay here's your here's your budget for this section of the library 
and you have till the, the book buying year ends in October. So it just ended. So we just had this whole big flurry of, hey, make sure you're spending your budget because it doesn't roll over. And I'm like, and I, and you're supposed to be buying stuff throughout the year. So, so, you know, you, you're only, you know, you're spending and you don't, you know, you don't buy everything because you can't because you don't have the money. You don't have the space to keep it. And that's just, that's just true. And some and stuff gets worn out and I'm, I'm going to that later. But, um, but what I hate is feeling like I have this money, but I don't see anything I want to buy for my collection or that I don't feel like I need to buy or that isn't going to get used, I don't think. But if I know that patrons are using this stuff and, you know, it comes back to me and it's got like, you know, a hundred certs and it's falling apart. And because like, and I'm like, oh, I will happily buy that thing because the one of the worst things that can happen is you buy something that you think, oh, this is going to be great. And then it just sits there and sits there and sits there. And after two years is kind of the magic cutoff date. So like if something doesn't, if brand new and doesn't check out for two years, it's gone because we just do not have the space to keep it. Uh, and, and when I say gone, it's like we put it on the book sale or we actually have a, a second or a, um, uh, uh, what it, this is, this is a new thing. Like it's like the system book sale where we have people who will take the books that we've weeded out and if they, and, and they like check it against like going rates on like online secondhand sellers. So like aid books or Amazon mm -hmm. or things like that. So we can recoup some more, some of that money back because we noticed um, people were coming into the branches and like doing their little book scan thing. So they were like buying our copies for like a buck, but then turning around and selling, selling them for much more. And we're like, why don't we just do that? <laughs> so that's so, smart. Yeah. So so we started doing that, and kind of they've been phasing out the branch book sale. Although our our branch still has a book sale because it's kind of nice to have, especially families that can come in and like. Oh, I love the all book these sales. Pictures. Yeah, I love the like, I love these... the library sales. So yeah, but look mm -hmm. at all these picture books we got for like ten bucks. Whereas if you bought them brand new at Barnes and Noble, that'd be like. 50 100 or even bucks. at some place like half price books or half price books you know because yeah. a lot like uh you know again it's going to vary across the board but like my branches oh, yeah. around here um if the if it's like a multi-day sale sometimes they'll do mm -hmm. or even yeah. if it's a one day like if you come in later in the day when they're getting close mm -hmm. to being done and they just really want to get rid of the stuff they're like anything like you can fit in a plastic shopping bag mm -hmm. five bucks so if, it's if, like... if we librarians have been going on a weeding tear and weeding is what we call it, we're like getting rid of books because we just don't have the room our our book sale our, our circulation staff is in charge of the book sale they'll be like and they have to ask the manager but she usually says yes she's like can we just do a 20 like a 25 cent and because me and the other children's librarian and you know we, we've been we've been going through a lot of the kids books and they're like you know, kids books, 25 cents each. Doesn't matter if it's a little tiny paperback or a big chapter book. Da, da, mm -hmm. and, and we will get people who ask, like, are there any kids books out there on the book sale? Like, you should go look because it just kind of depends. Um, but, yeah, so we'll, like, be, you know, um, I, I was going somewhere with this. Oh, right. So Jared, uh, and, I'll, and I'll talk about a lot of what Jared does, too, because he does the teen books a lot. And what happens sometimes, um, and, and Jared will do this every couple of years or so so he will set the report to say okay give me books that have not checked out in two years and they also obviously they have to be more they have to be have been in the collection for more than two years mm -hmm. so he just went through and did this and and he is pulling books and he's like texting me as he's doing this because we're kind of we're, we're geeks that way and he's like i remember putting this book on the new arrivals on the new arrivals display it never checked out i took it off the new arrivals and it just sat there zero cirques zero checkouts and, and he had to get rid of it because it's like it's not checking out we got it's got to go and it's like you know that money could have gone to something like somebody is really going to to read and enjoy and and obviously not everything is going to be a hit not everything is going to be a win a lot of this selection is a guessing game a lot of time although you can look at I mean I mean our acquisition staff they look at like reviews they look at you know popular what's popular now so there's like a movie coming out or a popular tv show or something in the news it's kind of a big deal mm -hmm. they'll they'll look at that 
um, to, to determine what, what they should buy. Uh, but sometimes, you, you know, you can't, not everything's a winner. So it just, it just happens, but it kind of sucks when it does. So coming back around to what patrons can do and what, you know, if there is something that you want to see in the library, and even if it is, and I, and I will say this, even if it is uh, like an Amazon only published, like, like, a, like an indie published book, because we have bought those, but that has come about because people requested them through the website. And, and that is one of the things that acquisition, our acquisitions librarians tell us all the time that if there's something that patrons are asking for that we don't have, patrons can fill out the, we call it suggest a purchase and whatever your library system calls it, it might be something similar. Check the website because mm -hmm. it should be there. And, and it's not just like, oh, we're sending you to a form so you'll go away and not bug us. No, our acquisitions librarians, they have told us time and time again, tell your patrons to request things through that suggest a purchase form because they look at that and they're like, oh, someone is requesting this. Somebody wants to read this. We should buy it because that is that feels like it's more money well spent rather than just, oh, this book, it got a good review in library journal. Sure, we'll buy it. And maybe that one will go out. I don't know. But it feels a little more personal when it's somebody in your community that's saying, hey, I want to read this book. We don't own a copy. Mm -hmm. and, and sometimes they won't buy it. Maybe they won't for whatever reason, but they'll try to get it through interlibrary loan, which is amazing. Um, because there is a, there's a service that we do, uh, it's called library at your door, which is for homebound patrons. Uh, and so like, if you can't get out of your house and, and it's usually a lot of elderly people, but there are some younger people who maybe have like health issues and it's hard for them to get out of the house, mm -hmm. but we'll mail, we'll mail books to them. And I actually work with, um, a couple who they'll call me every month or so and say, Oh, here's the next, our next few books that we want to get. Most of what they want, I have to get through interlibrary loan because it's some stuff that's kind of obscure, but we'll do it. And it's all at no cost to, to them. Mm -hmm. uh, and we have a budget for it. And we have a van. Need... The yeah. Bible library's got a van. They'll, 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 you know, they'll hand deliver that's if you, because cool. the, the, mm -hmm. <laughs> My li my particular library, if you look at a map of Indiana, we have the Indiana like state library system, and there's usually mm -hmm. one for each county, and then the depending on the size of the county, and there may be a couple different branches if they're a, a big enough city within you mm -hmm. know that that county. The county I live in just south of Indianapolis does have a branch for that county <laughs> but the way that the county the districting has been drawn out because our i because i think our, the lot my library was here first before mm -hmm. the state system put in okay. their branch so the area that they service is this small ish circle in the county and that and it's based on and that's based on where you live i live mm -hmm. in that circle and therefore i have to be a patron of this library i can't mm -hmm. go to the other uh, the, the larger state system but they can do transfers from that right. system so that's the Which, nice thing about it but it's just like yeah. Yeah, we have like the county library and all of the, those branches, but that's not my library because I happen to live in this neighborhood on this yeah. particular street. No, no, <laughs> that it's funny. It's funny that you brought that up because it, and and with Indiana, I could see that because you guys, it, 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 it's a distance thing. It's like you mm -hmm. guys, you guys are a little bit smaller, more and and there's more population, so so it makes more sense to have that. With Utah, it's like we have the Salt Lake metro area, big blank blank space of nothing, or mostly nothing. So oh, they yeah. have their little sort of bookmobile libraries. <laughs> and then down south, they have like their little system. So yeah. it, so we have the Salt Lake County system. And my branch is like on the, it's the furthest southeast you can get without going out of the county. 
So we get a lot of people from the county just south of us, Utah County, who come up, but they have to pay a fee because they don't live in the county. Mm-hmm. But they, they're all like, well, we like yours better because what happens is, and it's the way that, that Utah County is because it's bigger. They don't have a county system. Each town has their own library because they're more spread out. And they've got a mm-hmm. lot more rural area there. Like the further south you go, that's when it all starts to get more spread out. And so they can't really do a county or they don't want to. I don't know. So, so they'll, so like my, my brother in law and, and his family, they live in one, in one town, but they're actually, but, but the, the library in the next town over is actually closer to them than their town's library, but they can't use it without paying, uh, without paying for yeah, the, which I of, think I could, boundaries. if I wanted to, I could go to the, yeah. the state branch and uh-huh. apply for a card, but I would have to pay. Yeah. It's like 20 yeah. bucks or something like that because I don't technically well, live in their service area. Well, but that's uh, well, 20, even that is bucks, like compared to what you get, that's a lot of bang for your buck. Yeah, it is. I know we had to mm-hmm. increase our our fee and it just like people were like, what the crap? And I'm like, oh mm-hmm. gosh. But it, but it kind of had to in be done. In general, because, though, your yeah. local branch is free. <laughs> so yeah. but again yeah. it can so vary but a lot of places it is free to get yeah. you just have to prove you live in their area yeah. and that usually means your address is on your your id or you know a bill or something so it's it's yeah. not it's not hard to do and so so what you know getting getting your library card uh, and there there are places like like i said i mean i i work for the biggest i think i think we're the biggest system in the state but like i grew up in Poda. It's just, and so my, growing up, my thing was we had the bookmobile, which Mm -hmm. was awesome. And, and my library growing up was the bookmobile library, which was just sort of where they stored the books when they weren't on the bookmobile, but they did have a library in there. And and it was like in the basement of the fire to fire station or something. And, And she didn't like do story time or anything. She was just sort of a caretaker, but they did do summer reading, which was fine. I actually found a, a certificate that I got when I was nine years old, but when I did summer reading <laughs> that year, it was kind of cool. Um, so yeah, so even if you're like out further away, you know, the state library is supposed to like offer, you know, and there's, they have stuff online, but also they have bookmobiles that will come out. I, I know like bookmobile was always a big thing because they drive out just for our little, our little family. <laughs> We'd come out and pick a few books and they'd also go to the schools. And, and and stuff like that. So I had my bookmobile card. It was awesome. Um, and that's and now now that town they have their own full fledged library, which I'm, I remember when. Um, <laughs> but but yeah. So 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 going back to like, you know, you, you don't. It doesn't have to be just the the building where you go. Although the building is awesome. Um, mm-hmm. It can be it can be online. Like we we consider our databases or our ebooks or our all that other stuff, that's part of the collection. That is part of what you can do. And so, so yeah, so don't feel bad if like, oh, all I'm doing is the digital library. That's fine. That's the same as if you came and checked out 10 DVDs or something mm-hmm. or, or whatever. Or, um, yeah, so, so you know, you're you're not not using the library because the website is, it's they, they call it, in our, in our statistic reports, they call it the, the, some of them have called it, start calling it the digital branch, which I think is kind of cool. Other reports don't because they're not that hip. Whatever. <laughs> but, you know, they, they, they do that kind of stuff. So it's a lot of fun. So, so yeah. So if you, for whatever reason, don't want to come in or can't or you just want to do stuff online, like, you know, just, just download, download all that stuff. Look at the databases. The other one, um, so like there's Creative Bug, done Hoopla. Talked about Libby. I know of Canopy. I think the city has that one. I haven't really, but we don't have it. I haven't really got the chance to mess around with it. Um, LinkedIn Learning is a big one. Um, they're mm-hmm. trying to push that one for. So if you're like, I'm making all these fun little kitschy geek things and selling them on Etsy, and business is going crazy, and you want to kind of expand, but you don't know how. LinkedIn Learning. That mm-hmm. one has courses about business 
stuff. Um, there's also I need to learn how to uh, use Excel to manage, you know, Excel. to manage my finances. Yeah. I don't know yeah. how to use Excel. There's also if you need like legal forms. There's um, what is it called? We have a database that has all the the YOLO or no NOLO. Oh my NOLO. Yeah. NOLO. <laughs> I'm really saying YOLO. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I know what it looks like in my head because I've had to print off so many forms and it's not you know it, and it's just like people look at legal stuff and go you know not a lawyer not gonna give legal advice i just say like mm -hmm. here's the form you can print out and fill out and send to where you need it or they'll have contact information of you know legal mm -hmm. um organizations like especially people who maybe they, they can't afford it they can get in touch with uh legal advice that's pro bono so mm -hmm. so that's awesome and that's um, another thing you should think of too when you think about your local library. You should almost think of the library itself as a database and the yeah, librarians kind of as your access to that database cuz yes. You know, the li you know, librarians are very knowledgeable. I mean, most professional librarians have you know, they went to school to learn how to be a librarian. Yes. There's a, such a yes, thing as library do. science. Um, that's but what my, that's there's, what my degree is, yeah, Master of there, Library there's, Science. Yeah, there are some that, uh, you know, if they, if they don't, if they don't have somebody there that is knowledgeable on something, then odds are they can get you in touch with somebody who does. Yes. But that like, is, things that is like, our, that is our forte. Yeah. Like, like um like well this one it was a very extreme circumstance but when oh what was I, I read about it um one of the hurricanes in like the last you know five ten years or something like that uh -huh. that hit and um the what they they had I think they had to, had to bring people from other branches in to help, but there was one branch library in the area oh, and absolutely. they had, they had specifically had people there to help people fill out like their insurance, like, and like mm -hmm. to get like help from like FEMA and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. And there are some, there are some branches like, like this is kind of in my thing. Like, and, this, and I, I honestly think this is why I became a librarian is because I have so many things I'm like I'm interested in this I'm interested in that I'm interested and then I never really become an expert on it but mm -hmm. it's that jack of all trades master of none and that's just kind of what I do so mm -hmm. like because you know people I'll start talking about something and they're like I had no idea you knew about that I'm like oh yeah I just I read it in a book um, and that's kind of why I think librarianship kind of appealed to me because I don't have to know everything, but I do, I can know how to find help. And when we have like, we have like manuals filled up with like community resources for people who like maybe they need, they need food or they need a place to stay or they need legal help or they need help with, you know, a variety of things. And, and one thing we do is we partner with uh, the Utah Food Bank. And some branches, like kids, especially have a lot of kids who come in after school because their parents are working a gazillion jobs because they mm -hmm. have to. Um, they do. It's called Kids Cafe. And they get like a little bag lunch. And it's, you know, it's not anything fancy. Mm -hmm. But they, you know, they get they get something to eat. They get and they, and they have like a, a little activity in the afternoon. And it's like, it's nice because they have somewhere to go. They're not getting into trouble. They're and like, like i had one team librarian that i work with say it like this she's like yeah it's like they could they'll, they'll be in here and they can annoy us but at least they're not out you know annoying you know the cops or something like that yeah um and so it's like it's like i'd rather be at the library and be somewhere that's like safe and you know you're you know even if they're loud even if they're and playing it, and video it, yeah. games it's like it's yeah it's exactly like it's like Again, depending on the branch, you know, yeah. what they, you know, what they have access to. It's not just like, oh, you know, little Susie or, you know, young yeah. Johnny. It's like, oh, you know, when you get out of school, you're going to have to go to the library and tell mom and dad get home. And, you know, mm -hmm. it's not, it's not like, oh, you know, I'm going to have to sit there and read books. You're like, you don't have to be Matilda. No, uh, no, there's <laughs> like, a lot okay, of them. So 
yeah our teen area they've got like multiple like video game mm-hmm. systems and they've got vr headsets and they've oh, got yeah. board games oh the, yeah the, the, the area for the smaller kids you know it's more mm-hmm. like kind of more montessori type so it's got a lot of hands-on yeah. stuff for them oh to, yeah we have to use we have, so we have toys out the wazoo and we, we just mm-hmm. started um for especially for the little kids we have a little we have a cabinet where they can ask us for a board game and they can play it and it's like and it's stuff like there's a deck of cards or there's you know connect four or there's a game that like is good for your math skills or sorting or stuff like that and i know the the branch that's that's north of us that's a lot bigger so the the i don't know if it was the city or if it was the department of transportation but somebody built a pedestrian bridge over the road in front of that library because the way okay so it's set up on the library itself is set up on a hill. Then you go down, there's the road, and then you go down the hill a little further. There's a junior high. Well, mm-hmm. the kids would be walking across that street, and it's a really busy street. So instead of having them use like the crosswalk and hike up the hill, they built a pedestrian bridge that went straight to the library. So that branch started seeing an influx of middle school kids who are. Uh, I, I'm going to be charitable here and say they're kind of a tough crowd. Um, and they would just have tons and tons of these kids come into the library and where they hadn't had before. Well, well, the, the librarians there, um, the, especially the teen librarian, she started doing like gaming tournaments, they always have a craft going on. And then the manager and the assistant manager figured out a way. It's like, okay, parents are going to come pick up their kids. So we're going to make like a drop off lane. You know, mm-hmm. set cones out. So here's here, parents. Here's where you go to come pick up your kid after school because you know they're at the library because you could get them right after school. So mm-hmm. it's like they're working with the community and they realize here's a need that we need to to address. Yeah. And it's like okay, we're making this a welcoming place. Like oh crap, you know they could have been like oh crap, all these kids are going to be here and causing trouble and making a mess and everyone's going to be annoyed. Mm-hmm. Or they can say like. But, you know, and they built up the teen section there and they all, there's always something going on after school. They always have an after school program every day. Mm-hmm. And it's for those kids to just, you know, have a place to be. And yes, there are some, some instances like the kids who are <clears throat> doing some inappropriate stuff on the front lawn where <laughs> everybody could see kids them. Kids are going to be kids. This is true. Especially and teenagers. <laughs> You kind of just deal with those situations as they come up, and that's why we yeah. have a behavioral a behavior policy. Um, but yeah, so I mean, I co- I know we're kind of getting more into a little less about the the geek stuff, but you know, well, no, just, but I, I, I mean, it's that's that's the thing is like you know, it's a uh, your 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 library can be a community hub, and not just yeah. mm-hmm. a place where you pop in grab a few books, couple DVDs, bada bing, bada boom, you're out. It's like, you know, your kids can stay after school and you know that they're someplace safe and there's adult supervision and they're, you know, they're mm-hmm. keeping out of trouble. I mean, my city in the area outside of the library, it was just like a grassy field that was like over, it used to be soccer fields. I think mm-hmm. belonged to a school that, that they tore down um, and and you know they could have done a lot of things with that but instead they put in walking paths and a really nice playground Mm -hmm. so when the weather's nice yeah some of those kids that you know come after school they can go out and play on the playground and then there's nice big you know grassy area where they can just kind of run around or do whatever and of course you know Mm -hmm. if you're a pokemon go player there's lots of pokestops and gyms right there so (laughs) <laughs> Speaking of which, and there's so, Wi-Fi, yeah. so you can play Pokemon Go without worrying about um, using it for data. Yep, that's true too. I mean, because they make because they make sure that the Wi-Fi at least extends out into the parking lot. Yes, in fact, that was one thing during the pandemic, and even after, like, you know, because on the on Fridays and Saturdays we close a little early, but we'll tell people, hey, the Wi-Fi stays on at least an hour after we close, so you can sit mm-hmm. in the parking lot with your laptop if you need to finish up. And, and we have a lot of people. Because where my branch is, it's a little more, it's more in a more affluent part of, of the valley. So we have public computers available, and most people bring in their own laptops. 
so it's it's kind of cool. In fact, the parents uh, when they bring their kids in, that we used to have iPads that the kids could play with, but the parents got mad because they're like, we came here so we could get away from the screen, so we got rid of the iPad. But we have a lot of toys, and we have a lot of you know games and stuff like I said before. And so I want to I want to go over a couple of things. So one of my favorite things about what I do personally is I do story times and actually do them every every Monday morning. And um, and it's really cool because I do a baby story time and I do a preschool story time. But my favorite thing about about doing baby story time is we do like 15 minutes of we we do rhymes, we do songs, and then we read a story. And then I get toys out and let them play. And it's just it's babies from newborn to like 18 months roughly. Well, it's like when you're a new parent or you know you have little kids and you're like you're just so. You, you want to get out of the house. You need mm-hmm. adult conversation. You need someone who gets what's going on. And I have had so many adults, so many grownups, so many parents, grandparents, whoever come in and they just talk to each other about what they're going through. Like, how do I figure out this new baby? Or, you know, parents who've like, this is my third kid. Oh, you know, yeah. you do this and this. Oh, Ask let's set anything. up a play date. <laughs> yeah. It's like, let's set up play dates. Our kids are, are being friends. This is so cool. And, and that sort of thing. and I and I just kind of sit back and watch that happen. I'm like, oh, my heart, I'm doing, you know, we're, you know, this is this is what this is for. It's like, mm-hmm. yes, you're learning about early literacy. Yes, you're learning about how to help your child succeed in life. But also, you're getting to like, you're, you, this is good for you too because you're not just because you get it's so easy to get lost in the drudgery of changing diapers, feeding time, nap time, all this stuff, and just to be able to get out. And do something that isn't being stuck in your house is amazing. So I, you know, as, watching as, Bluey for the five hundredth time. <laughs> yes, although Bluey, Bluey has its charms. I will say that uh, Bluey is Bluey now on oh. Disney Plus for those of the United States who don't know. Uh. Yes, and it is it's 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 good stuff. It's good stuff. So, um, um, but yeah, but kind of in that same vein. So when I started. At, uh, at my branch and we were kind of starting from scratch because it was still the pandemic and like so many things had gotten canceled and we're out of the the habit of doing things and my manager said like look you can do whatever program you want when we start back up doing programs again because it's like a fresh slate so take advantage of this and I was like I love playing Pokemon Go but it's a lot more fun with a group and I don't know how mm-hmm. to find a group I'm gonna do a Pokemon Go club because we are right next to a park and it's a really big place with a lot of stops and gyms and stuff. And I'm like, I don't know if this is going to work. I know a lot of people have quit playing the game, but I'm going to see, I'm going to open this up and see what happens. And that's basically what I did. And two years later, I have the greatest group of probably about, I want to say like 10 to 12 year olds. Some are a little older, some are a little younger. And it's so, so much fun because I mean, and their parents come with them. And what we do is we meet and we kind of like get, get going like, okay, we're going to go walk around the park. And I made them little lanyards with our, with our Pokemon Go club thing. And then they get badges for every month they come. So, and it's all the Pokemon types. So, and what's fun is that because we are such a big branch and because we get patrons from all over, even though my branch is kind of one of the ones that's the most out of the way. We will. I will get people who are like searching on the website. Like, I want to do a Pokemon thing. So they search Pokemon on our calendar and they see all the Pokemon programs. Well, then they see mine's the only Pokemon Go program because there's like Pokemon Club and the training cards and whatever. So they're mm-hmm. like, oh, they actually play Pokemon Go. And if you know about Pokemon Go, if you want to do like the big legendary raids or mm-hmm. you know trade with people or make friends, you got to have a big group. And it's so much, and, and and for these kids, and I've had the parents come and say, I don't know a dang thing about this game, and I know my kid likes to play it. None of none of their friends at school do, but then we meet all these other kids who are roughly their same age. In fact, there's one one girl who lives close to my library, comes with her grandma, I want to say, and then another one who was like out on the west side of the valley drove out to my library because they were because we were doing this and 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 so it was like this this mom and her daughter came out and these two girls just hit it off best friends 
nice. and they're from very you know vastly different like you know different kind of background different place where they live they don't go to the same schools but they were they were getting so and like we walk and, and we just walked this whole big loop I think it was about a half hour to walk around the park and I can just hear them just chattering to, just just gabbing to themselves about like oh did you catch this and then they'll talk about things like you know favorite movies favorite this favorite that and then was like you girls are adorable <laughs> it just kind of it's like you know that whole my heart it just is like bursting and I didn't know yeah. what was going to happen with this program it, but it's just so exciting and like every month I do my monthly report because you know that's like how they know what, what we're doing what's going on and I'm just like this month the Pokemon Go Club, these two girls became best friends. And yeah. so, happy. so it was so cool. So, so all of that, I did. I just love to gush about it. Um, but it's just, it's just, it's just fun. And uh-huh. I will say, for for people out there who are like, well, that's great, but my library doesn't have anything that cool. Or my library, I wish they could do this. Or I want to start this kind of a club or have a class or something. Really easy. Tell you, go tell I'm them. Gonna, go tell them. Go tell librarians. Because like I said. Even better, people, if you can volunteer, do so. Yes. Yes. We <laughs> mm-hmm. need volunteers. And some libraries, they will have what's called an advisory board. Um, we have a teen advisory board, or we try to. because Sometimes teens age out and we got to get new ones. But. I know that some libraries will have ones for adults. Yeah, keep up with what's try, hip. Yeah, and they'll try to do one for kids, but that one's a little trickier to do. But this is a group of people, and, and in the case of the teens, they're like, okay, what do you guys want to do? What kind of programs do you want to have? And and they'll like come up with ideas. And kids work with, with these days. Yeah, it's like, what do you guys want to do? Oh, you know, we'll do... You know, or, or, you know, you'll get to maybe help out because we just had our big Halloween spooktacular, which is basically a carnival. Mm-hmm. And we'll get the, we'll get the teen advisory board or tab is what we call it, um, to come and they're like, you guys can do a booth or something or do a game and they'll come up with the most insane stuff and it's really cool. Uh, but they'll like, but, but it's like, here, you guys take ownership of it. You plan it. The library will, will sponsor it because again, we want to do things that people are going to enjoy. And, and just like with, with the books and like I'm buying these books and maybe people will check them out, maybe they won't. But if I know that there's an interest in something here, then mm-hmm. I'm going to be more motivated. Like I want this to be awesome. I want this to work out because when, because I have planned programs that like one or two people showed up to and you're like, well, I'll do it for, for you because you actually came. I do wish we could have gotten more people. <laughs> <laughs> but um but, but libraries like we have a budget we have you know we have spaces that, you know, that we can book that we, that we can reserve we have these things and and our our system actually has a programming department that has like supplies that maybe we can't keep at the branches like they have like a rocket launcher and they have a giant life-size chess set um mm-hmm. they have i mean there's there's just so many things they have yoga mats they have Legos, they have 3D doodlers, which are like, they're kind of like 3D print pens. Um, they have robot kits, like mm-hmm. you can build your own robots. Um, so it's like, just ask, because you don't know what the library has, has available. Or, you know, some again, like we're at the end of the budget year, and we're like, what do we want to buy? What are people going to use? But if we have an idea of like, oh, so-and-so asked about this, Maybe we can try to see if we can get something to do that or, or things like that. Like librarians, we, we have our own ideas and we can come up with some pretty cool stuff. But I'm just one person. <laughs> and right. there's some things I just can't think of on my own. And I would never occur to me to think. And, and oh, you're not maybe. John. You're not John Q. Public either. So you, it's like you don't That's know true. what the, the person yeah. who lives six blocks away might want. That's true. And. This is the funny thing, I will tell you, because where our library is, like we're near the park, we're also near the senior center. In fact, we share a, a, a parking lot with the senior center. So we do a lot of, we do, we do a, a, our, our public services library, and she does a book club at the senior center, which is great. Um, but, but the, the, the library system did a recent, is like a population demographic study about each of the service areas. 
Mm-hmm. And it turned out that our branches, uh, where, where my branch is, the, the demographic is like, it, cause, cause we get a lot of ki- little kids and a lot of senior citizens at the library just because of where we are. Um, but our, te- the, our city that we're in, the demographic is, uh, mid thirties, you know, average is like mid thirties. Uh, not married, working in tech, because we're really close to where all the tech companies are. Um, very affluent, which I, I knew that that was a given. Um, and it's like, so it's basically, don't get mad at me, but this is the term, the tech bros. Those mm-hmm. are who live in our town. And I'm like, well, how do we cater to them? How do we get them to come? And it's kind of like, I don't know, because <laughs> I'm not one of, I'm not in that that social circle i don't Mm -hmm. know a lot of them and honestly a lot of them kind of just i don't know but at the same time i'm like i also don't want to go chasing this demographic if i've got this demographic that is coming and i don't want to just be like oh i'm going to ignore you because i got to go chase these guys who may or may not have any interest in what we're doing Mm -hmm. but if i can but but you know and we're do i mean we're not like completely ditching what's working in favor of oh they said we got to go get these these this other demographic to come in but we are working with some outreach that we do outreach um we're getting we're doing a lot of stuff like with our our local the city council so they've been mm-hmm. so spreading some things with us and like we're you know getting feedback from them and they're like well could the library do x y and z with us and like oh that might be fun or like every year they do it's um, the town's called Draper. I should just say so. Um, and every day in the park, which is right next to us, they do its Draper Days, which is basically like big Fourth of July. Although it's not during the Fourth of July, but it's like they have car shows, they have the Miss Draper contest, they have a parade, they have mm-hmm. a five k, they have all this stuff. It's like, well, why doesn't the library do something? And like, we'll probably end up doing something like that. I know we've been in the parade before, um, but like doing like 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 getting people to know that we're there and maybe that'll work. But at the same time, I'm like all my little, my little regular people who come, it's so fun to see them. And then, but then on the same, in the same, in that same vein today, like I said, I do, I do story time today was Monday. I did a uh, baby and me, which I said, like I said, is my baby story time. I had, and this includes adults and children, 71 people in there. Wow. And, which is a lot. Wow. A lot. Even, that is a lot. I, I, I was not expecting that many. And a handful were some of my regulars, but most of them were new people. I don't know what made them come today. I have no idea. Maybe it was just because it was a little colder. Maybe people just threw, maybe it was like a, a mom group that, that figured out that we were here or something. They came and they had fun. And it was a little overwhelming for me, but I was okay with that because they were, I didn't, I, I don't know. It just, it, I, I just had to adjust and I did fine and it was mm-hmm. great and everybody said they loved it and I'm just like I don't know where all they where the help came from but I'm really glad that they did <laughs> because you should find out I should find I was gonna ask but it was like because I was like doing playtime and I'm running this way and running that way and kind of yeah, it was it was chaos it was if you see it I, if they if they come again like if you see some of the I same know. faces you can be like uh How'd you find out? Like, like, we're glad you're here. It's like, but... Yeah, I'm so glad you're here. I'm curious how how you how you how did you end here. up here? <laughs> how did you end up here? I'm so I gotta know. Um, yeah. so anyway, I know I'm just kind of blathering on about this, but this is this is what I do. This is my yeah. Thing. No, I mean, oh. I told I totally get it. Like my uh. Yeah, you know, one of the like I said, for the longest time I didn't go to my local library, but one of the times that I did before mm-hmm. I became such a fanatic was <laughs> ten years ago. They had a Doctor Who day, and I just oh, happened yeah. to see it posted or something mm-hmm. somewhere. So I made sure to go that day, and they were showing episodes of Doctor because this is right leading into the fiftieth. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah, uh, our, you know, I went and they were showing episodes of Doctor Who and they were doing Doctor Who crafts. And, mm-hmm. you know, at the time I wore like the one Doctor Who shirt I owned because I was <laughs> still fairly newish to the fandom. Um, and 
uh but you know since then i've seen them do like they've done like pair like uh the library after dark where mm-hmm. they've had like music and like finger foods and they've had adult beverages and it's just for the adults and mm-hmm. they get to they they have the run of the library and can kind of play with whatever and they also brought in some like games and like i think like a mobile laser tag <laughs> yeah i think we've but, i think we've got one of those yeah so like yep. i've seen them do that um there was one time where i i went into the library because i needed to go to the library but it also just so happened that they were doing uh a community um where they were like because it you know some of the libraries they will sell you know stuff mm-hmm. that they're not going to keep anymore but sometimes there's stuff that, that can't be sold so they'll just give it away yeah and that's what they were doing is they had piles of stuff that they knew they couldn't sell but they still wanted to get rid of and not have it go to a dumpster or anything mm-hmm. so they were they had piles of those books and people could just grab you know whatever they wanted but at the same time they were also doing um they had cakes and cupcakes from various local bakeries for people to eat just cause <laughs> so it's like you know come pick up a come pick up a, a free book and have a cupcake have a while cupcake. you're at it. Do it so it's like or uh was it this earlier this year or maybe it's next year it was definitely during the summer i remember it being hot um again i came to the library because i needed to <laughs> and outside it looked like like shakespearean era like had just taken over the parking lot there was there was a person with this giant contract uh, this giant like spit where they were roasting meat and they had a little the little oven and there was a chicken on a leash tied to a tree and there were people like grinding like corn and then there were over in the grass there were people sword fighting and some of the guys were wearing like actual like armor and chain mail and it's the it's the society of creative acron- ac- acronisms which is a like a a national like group of people who are fans of like the 16 i think it has to be like 1600s and back i think wow. um but they'll do like jousting and show you how they prepared food at the time period and that they make their own time period accurate clothing and they were just they were doing this out in the parking lot they were also doing stuff inside but i completely missed it uh but you know it's it's a they're not connected to the library but it's a local like club Mm -hmm. that was all like hey we want to show off some of the stuff we do and maybe get new members can we utilize your space and the library is like sure you can use this one room inside and take over the parking lot you know tie a chicken to a tree and it was it was the most wild thing because it's like i just went to the library to pick up something i had on hold and the next Mm -hmm. thing you know i'm talking to you know a guy about like plate armor (laughs) so you know it's just you just never know (laughs) so so i kind of have similar stories to that but uh so one of one of our branches it's actually kind of our main admin branch i guess Mm -hmm. um is it's also attached to our big event center and this was built like oh more than 10 years well more than 10 years ago but they built it so that they could have big huge events and and so we do a lot of big things and one of them that i did i and jared and i have both been on the committee for this is social con which I, i've mentioned before when i've been on the podcast and it's the anime convention for teens and it's so it was so funny because we took up so so we have vendors and it's mostly teens who are like selling stuff so it's like the first opportunity they get to make things and sell them make a little bit of money um and, and because it's the event center because our our system they've got some because we're under the county umbrella there's some real strict policies about buying and selling but if it's at the a viridian event center it's okay because it's an event center uh, they have <laughs> rules. 
It's an event. So, <laughs> an event. so it's like a convention, you know? So we take up the whole lobby with all of the vendors, and then we have the, the rooms, like, kind of down the rest of the center where there's, like, panels and gaming and crafts and a couple other things, and, and then we, we do you know, the cosplay contest. And it was so funny because the lobby is, like, so you have the lobby in the middle, and on one side is the library, and then upstairs is the administration with their offices, and the other side is the, the Viridian Center. So people who are walking into the library, just, you know, they're going to, they're walking, so they go to the library side, and they're looking, and they're like, all these kids in cosplay, and, you know, with, with the wigs, and the and the makeup, and the fake weapons, and all this stuff, and they're looking at, like, what in the world is going on? <laughs> and... And we also had a few things going on in the library side because that, that particular branch blessed them. Sometimes they end up just kind of being overflow for our big things, especially SocialCon. So we had a scavenger hunt going on in there. Um, and there's just kids running around in their cosplay and just doing all that stuff, all that fun stuff. Mm-hmm. And, and it was so cool because like people will ask like, well, what is this? But it, and we had to like be really strict, like this is just for teens. And it was funny because we give them all wristbands so to you know, make sure they've checked in and everything. Well, the parents, you know, because because it, it goes all the way down to age twelve, so we consider the the twelve year olds to be part of the teen group. So, and there's some parents which I get they don't want to just leave let their twelve year old run around by themselves. So, but we're like, okay, now your parent has to you you know you you got you know your parent has to stay with you. You can't have any unsupervised adults. In the <laughs> and the parents all get a kick out of that so they get their own wristband to make sure like okay yeah we know that this parent is here this adult and so that's that that's always fun so yeah that that reminded me of that and then the other one that I, I wasn't on the committee but I helped on on a day was um owl camp which Rachel actually has a picture of in the powerpoint mm-hmm. um so in the lobby we it, so it's it's Harry Potter themed, although we kind of fudge it a little bit to get away, get away. Um, copyright. <laughs> copyright infringement. But it's Harry Potter. Like, come on. Yeah. Um, so, and it's a, it's not a fooling anybody. <laughs> we're not fooling anybody. And it's fun. Um, so, you know, we're all dressed up. And what it is, it's for like kind of that, it's like, well, 12 and older. So it, it is sort of, but what we're talking about. Hogwarts age. 11. <laughs> yeah, Hogwarts age. So I guess actually 11 and up. But I think there's some slightly younger kids, but we because it's so popular, they have to split it up by age group, and then they do um, so like like so they do so we we invite uh, uh the local aviary and the, the so Temple cool Garden, yeah at the University of Utah um they come down who else is there oh Clark Planetarium so the Planetarium they came so you have you and, have like literal subject matter experts yes yes so we have we have subject matter experts so there's the tracy aviary which like birds and stuff like that so so they like so so that one was so, so they do classes throughout the day and they get sorted into their houses and the house that they get into is shows what the classes are and the day that i went and i was just supposed to like herd my little my little second years around so i was i was the, the house mom for Gri- for the griffin house not Gryffindor, Griffin house. <laughs> um, and I just had to make sure that everybody is, you know, playing nice. I could give out house points. I could take away house points. So they had the whole house point thing going on. Um, and it was, and then they have a common room, which they can do. We actually had a, had a guy and I, I, I know him because he, he works for the system and he, he's this, he's, he's pretty awesome. He, he did, he does a mean Gilderoy Lockhart. And by mean, I mean like, he looks just like it. That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> he was there signing autographs in the common room. And they did like a, a, a gnome toss. So they like had to swing the gnomes over their heads and chuck them. And they got prizes for that. Um, it was like a scavenger hunt. But yeah, so we had, so it was like, so they did Herbology, which was the, the Red View Gardens, which are up at the University of Utah. So they like do, you know, they, they talk about different plants and what, and they could, they made a little, it's like like a little thing for like a crawling plant to to grow and crawl up around. So they do that like in a in a herbology sort of a class, and they did divination with eggs. And they like and so the aviary the people from there taught them like 
um, the parts of the egg, and this is what this is, and you know, and, and things like that. So like, and how, and then they had bird skeletons and feathers. Like, how to identify birds? And then I'm um, trying. Oh, and the, then the Museum of Natural uh, of uh, Natural History came out, and uh, they've had the planetarium in years past. I don't think they had them this year. Uh, but it's like it's a way for we're doing a Harry Potter themed activity, a program. But they're also learning science and biology and mm-hmm. and all these different things. So it's still it's fun and we make it entertaining for them. But they're also learning. Um, oh, that's okay. That's what it was. That's what the a museum did. They did uh, building prosthetics for birds. So they talked about how like they three D printed um, beaks and talons and things for birds who like lost them for whatever reason. And they're like, okay, here's how you're going to try to engineer something. And they give them like straws and pipe cleaners and I mean, just, just stuff. So they're, they're learning how to, how to build so it was like structural engineering for how, okay, now this bird has to survive. So that, how is this bird going to use this, this, this beak prosthetic to, to pick up, you know, its food or, or defend mm-hmm. itself or things like that. Um, this was clear back in June, so I'm like trying to remember all the stuff we did. But yeah, the 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 lobby was decorated to be like the Great Hall, and oh my gosh, they just went all out. And everybody who came to work that day, or you know, came to work work at the event, had to be dressed up in some way. I had my Hogwarts robe, and it was fun. It was just so much fun. And they're then the kids were learning stuff. And again, all free. This was free for. Our for our patrons out because Owl Camp is so popular, and it would be a nightmare if it was just come you know come you know just come on that day they have to free register. for all <laughs> yeah they can't do a free for all that's just, there's just no way but they have to register um because and then they have to be told what day they're coming because it's it's all age based you know based on your age because the the STEM um subject matter is you know geared toward the 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 state curriculum in schools and stuff like that so it's like supporting what the schools are doing and it's during the summer so you know i mean there's like a million and one camps that you can send your kids to Mm -hmm. but this one free f-r-e-e free Mm -hmm. i cannot stress that enough because it floors me how many times people come into the library and ask about a program they're like well does it cost it's like no (laughs) Even if you don't live in 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 our service area, and and like in it, like you can come to a program, you can come to an activity. You don't have to have a library card to come to mm-hmm. to like a you know anything any any of the things we do. I, I now if you want to check out something or you know rent the room or or whatever though that you know that you do have to have a card for. But even if you like know somebody who has a card and they can book the room. And you guys can go do whatever you want to do. That's fine. I mean, mm-hmm. I'm not going to stand there. You know, the group just comes in and says, hey, we have the room booked. I'm like, okay. I, you know, as long as the person who reserved it is there, um, I let them in and people come. And I don't stand there like, you have a library card? You have a library card? You have a library card? <laughs> I just, I don't because there's there's no point. Mm-hmm. But we'll have like author visits and 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 things like that. And we get... So when, like, when we did ToshoCon, even we had kids come from other counties in the state. they you know, they they came up from all over the place because they knew that this was happening, and it's just for them. It's just for the teens. It's not adults, and because sometimes, you know, Comic Con fan X can be intimidating. But mm-hmm. if this is just for the teens, it it's smaller, but it works and it's fun. Mm-hmm. So, but yeah, you're you know. Um, and I know I've kind of, you know, talked about my system because obviously that's what I know, I know best, but for, you know, anybody, wherever you are, your library is free. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And if, if, I mean, if there ever is a charge, like with the 3D printing and stuff like that, it's probably just to cover the cost of materials. And even then it doesn't, your, your whatever you're paying is not the whole cost of materials because we have money budgeted for that and it's, mm-hmm. it's just there's a little bit to offset it and that kind of thing 
And I know, you know, fines or, you know, lost items and stuff like that. And that stuff happens. And even when you have a fine, I know our, our circulation staff, like they are really good about working with people. They'll, they'll, they, they are, they are authorized to waive fines using their best judgment in the situation. And, you know, sometimes, you know, life happens. It, it mm-hmm. does. And if you can, if, you know, but, you know, the, the fees, I, I feel like are just kind of a, hey, we've got to share all this, you know, all these things. And it wouldn't be fair if you just kept that book forever mm-hmm. and ever and ever. So uh, it, uh, to me, it's like, it just is kind of a way to encourage, bring it back when you're done. Or even if you're not done, please bring it back still. Because especially somebody else might want it. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, one thing. One thing I know uh, that, that it's we a did, finite number of books to go around. <laughs> that is true, and we can only get so many. But one thing yeah. I, I that we have is is the schools around where I, you know where where my branches, well, even other places in the valley, they will say, "Okay, the, everybody's going to read this one book over the summer because you're going to be quizzed on it when you come back to school." And it's like, "Okay, we have like." five copies in the whole system could you have told us that we were doing this so so yeah so that one sometimes the schools kind of don't think things through because they just think oh the library will have it yeah you got like thousands of high school students who are all fighting over the same handful of copies of whatever the book is so it's been like um tell us tell us in advance because we can actually order those so, mm-hmm. so here's another thing. If anybody is like on, you know, you know, working with schools or plans to have some kind of project where the kids all have to read the same book, let your local library know like in the spring or even in January because they can buy the book. They just need enough notice. So because again, that that goes back to we want to spend money on things that are actually going to get used or that are you know that are needed. Mm-hmm. So, and, and I told we we, we had a, a meeting with um uh, the school librarians in our service area, and I just told them I'm like, look, if any of the teachers or you know one of your grades wants them to all read the same book, please let us know. If we can get those, we just need to know about it in advance. And I and I'm like I am this close like I got to track down the PTA president because y'all are doing your own battle of the books and you didn't tell us and now we've got everybody coming looking for the same list of books and I'm like oh we could have done this better mm-hmm. <laughs> but anyway that's just that's just one of my gripes like I said this is about this is about you know me sharing some of the behind the scenes shenanigans of of libraries and. But, you know, like, really library life, <laughs> library life. Um, but, you know, yeah, I mean, communicate, talk to your librarians, you know, may, maybe there's one or two who, are, who seem a little gruff and you get a little intimidated by it. Go talk to the children's librarians because we're nuts and we're a lot of fun. <laughs> <laughs> it's like I, I haven't seen the Barbie movie. Unless they somebody... just had 70 people at baby story time. <laughs> yes, 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 I did. It was fun, but oh boy. Um, but I, I haven't seen the Barbie movie, but I do know about Weird Barbie. And somebody said, somebody put out a meme that was like, "Yeah, like, here's the veteran children's librarian, and it's Weird Barbie with all the, the glitter and the stuff written yep. on her face and everything." I'm like, "Yep, that's accurate. Yep. That is accurate." Weird Barbie <laughs> was probably a children's library in a past life. <laughs> oh yes. Oh yes. <laughs> And I'm like, yeah, I'm like looking at look, looking at all like we've got markers and stickers and and glitter and all the fun stuff and puppets. Mm-hmm. Puppets are so fun. That's weird. Anyway, the library's just got all sorts of fun. I remember, I remember. I think it was correct me if I'm wrong, but you know, I think it's when you were was it when you were working at the library? You just have to be living re- really close to your local. But I remember you like go to your library and get like a whole bunch of books and then you post a picture of you with your bag just stuffed full as you're walking home with your stash. Oh yeah, I remember that. She's like Matilda, except she didn't have the wagon. She's like, look, all the stuff I just got from the library. 
Also, I have some weeks like that, depending on uh-huh. when, when when my requests come in. Sometimes they come in all at once. Right. <laughs> I'm like, I've that, got five million movies to watch in the next week. <laughs> so so I I maintain another reason I became a librarian is because if I went to work at a bookstore, I would never bring home my paycheck. Yeah. Well, I would, but it would all be books. So yeah. So what I what I found out, if you feel like retail therapy is like your therapy, you can trick yourself into thinking that you're going shopping for new books and new stuff. You go to the library and check out, like, just go look at the new arrivals display and like, oh, this I like this cover. This one looks good. Mm-hmm. You go browse back here and find, and then you leave with you know fifty books, and you haven't spent a dime. Now, will you read all those books? I don't know. That's up to you. But, uh, there, there, but yeah, there have been times when I'm just like, this one looks good. This one looks good. I have been known to kind of like, while, while, I'm, while I'm going through some of the new arrivals or, or some of the other stuff, or if I see it on a display, and I'm like, ooh, this looks good. And I just kind of, you know, stick it on my cart. Oh, we'll check that out later. And then, you know, 10 books later, I'm like, I may have overestimated my, mm-hmm. <laughs> my ability to, <laughs> to get through all this stuff. But it's okay. It's totally okay because all it all it cost me, well, was you know, the bus spot on my cart. Carry it, <laughs> pretty much. Carry it. Like I I I bought a bigger, uh, like a bag, a, a bigger bag, so I could carry all those books. But it still isn't big enough. I still am like <laughs> trying to shove everything in there. Um. So yes, librarians are not immune from from over checking out and. No, I have not read all the books in the library. Would that I had that kind of time, but I don't. <laughs> but that's what Novelist is for, which is a, a yet another database that tells you all about all the different books that you have in your system. Mm-hmm. So, you know, if you need to read a like, we have, you know, mm-hmm. I don't know, we have Novelist. I'm sure there's other ones. But yeah, again, check your web, check your library's website. Or go mm-hmm. ask your library, because we know all about this stuff. We don't get to talk about it quite mm-hmm. as much as we probably should. Which would be nice, yeah. But yeah. If you if you're oh. not like if you if you if there's something you're looking for, like a, a database or a, a resource or something, you can ask. Yeah. Or if you just like you want to get the four one one with what's going on at your your library you could be like hey if i just come in is there somebody i could i i mean when i was when i originally got the idea for this presentation that's what i did is i emailed my Mm -hmm. library and i was like if i come in is there somebody i can talk to and that's exactly what happened i I scheduled the time i came in she gave me a full Mm -hmm. tour from bottom floor top bottom inside out and yep. told me about like all the all the things that you you know again that i even though i had been going to the library i did yeah, not no realize clue. was was there like we've got mm-hmm. uh you know mine's got uh you know obviously books dvds books on tape although i'm sure most of those are probably on cd but still blu-rays mm-hmm. You know, they've got comic books and mangas yep. in the in the teen section. They've got uh board games and like bundles. They they created like theme bundles that you could check out for like family mm-hmm. game night. So it can be like a board game and like an, a a movie that's kind of themed to go with it. Yeah. Um they've got that. They've got they've got tools. Like stuff you can check out so that you're not having to buy it. So if you're like, Uh I need a soil meter to test my soil, but I don't want to buy one and I have no place to rent one. My library, you can check one out or a telescope. Yeah. Oh yeah. We have (laughs) telescopes. We are, we call it the library of things. Yeah. And it's stuff like (laughs) telescopes. We have Chromebooks. Oh, this is the coolest one. And I actually put it in my notes, but I need to, I need to mention it. So we have a collection, it's called Preserve the Memories. And it's things like, and it's stuff like, you know, you have all those old home movies or film negatives or stuff like that. And it's like, this is like precious, irreplaceable stuff. But it's, if it's just sitting in your attic and it's going to, you know, wear out. Deteriorate. Or just, mm. Deteriorate. You want it, you know, this is, 
you know, graduations, weddings, birthdays, all that kind of stuff. And you want to, we have equipment that you can, you know, depending on what you need, you can, you can check out and you can digitize all that stuff. And my, and, and one of, one of the ones that we have is, in fact, if you have VHSs, um, we have a machine that will hook up to your computer and will digitize your VHS. Which I am not going to confirm nor deny that that would work on your videotape of the original theatrical release of Star Wars. <laughs> <laughs> I can neither confirm nor deny that, or any other VHS for that matter. So, so we have that, um, it, you know, and it is marketed as you know, pr- you know, digitizing your your, you know, photos, home movies, and stuff like that. But it kind of could have other uses as well. Mm-hmm. Um, so we have we have that we have Chromebooks we have hotspots which was really helpful when I was living with my in laws and our internet went out one day and my my mother in law really needed it because what did she oh she was having a, a, some meeting for work I can't remember what it was now but we were kind of desperate so I ran down it was on my day off and I I called down to my branch and I said hey do we have a hotspot available yes I'm coming down to get it <laughs> so we so we had. And and it gives you internet connection as long as you have a cell signal. And again, so you don't have to use your your phone hotspot, which is going to drain your 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 data. Mm-hmm. Uh, but the but this one, the library has a budget for it; they're paying for it. So and it's it's for you to check out. Um, we have story time to go. So there's these little backpacks that have like themed story times for kids, and they love them because it's like I got my own backpack. Mm-hmm. And it says there's like some toys, some books, like a little, you know, noisemaker, and they all have themes. There's nature kits that, you know, and and they change with the seasons. And those, um, again, going back to uh, Tracy Aviary, which is our local uh, aviary, and and our and our zoo, I think does a few of them. Um, so they'll change it out. Like you can go chase butterflies, and you know, this shows you how to catalog them, or tells you what kind of, or you know, bird watching depending on the season, or the next one coming up is the winter time, so it's like here we're gonna examine snowflakes and how the snowflakes form, and here's all these tools that you can use to to do all these like kind of science experiments, which is really popular, especially with with homeschool groups, because we have a fair amount of those, and it's so it's like you know we're trying to to kind of reach out to all these different people, um, and they're always we're oh and we just added GoPros to the library of things, so we've got the those. Um, one of the branches has therapy lamps because it's getting to be winter time and, you know, sun is not as plentiful as it was back in July. Mm-hmm. Um, so that one, that one's brand new. And I mean, they're just uh, the, the acquisition library. And it's just, she just, it feels like every couple of months, she's just adding something new. She sends out an email saying, Hey, we have this new, this new item in the library of things. And it's just like, Holy crap. I, I don't think we've gotten the tools yet, but that one is just a matter of time, I swear. Like mm-hmm. there's gonna be a ban there's gonna be a there's gonna be a hacksaw in there somewhere. Or whatever, <laughs> I don't know. Um, yeah, because it's like if you if it's something you need for like one time use, you're oh, yeah. not gonna go to the hardware store and drop Especially down a something... bunch of money for something you're yeah. l- literally only gonna use once. And there are some places you can rent some of that stuff, but again, it's, it's very not necessarily inexpensive and it may not be convenient. Yeah. But if you could just pop into your library and be like, hey, you know, maybe it's mm-hmm. like, I don't know, you, you got a, a check engine light that came on your on your mm-hmm. car and you can't, you know, places like AutoZone, they'll check it for you, but maybe you're not near one or mm-hmm. you can't get to it, you know, for whatever reason, my library's got like that thing that you hook up to your car and it reads the code oh. and tells you, tells you what the code is. Oh, nice. So it's like, yeah. 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 Oh, well, speaking of car maintenance, we also have the Chilton's database or it's like a database that has all the Chilton's um, maintenance manuals. And you can, so instead of just, instead of checking out that great big, huge uh, car repair manual, you can mm-hmm. just print off the one page you need about, you know, checking the battery or, or replacing the battery or, or doing an oil change or whatever. So that's nice. Um, so, so yeah, so there's just, just 
this is this is my it's, other it's, big it's, thing. Yeah, it's like it's it seems so random that you're like at the mm-hmm. library, really? But it's like, yeah, no, oh, yeah. that's that's. I mean, that's the thing is, it's like people, uh, you know, like I say, the people in like the the Reddit are like, is it okay if I do this? And the, the librarians are like, yes, that's that's please, why it's what we budget for. And the thing uh-huh. is, it's like if you know if it's your local library you're living in their service area you're helping pay for it anyway in some you, form you of are. local taxes yes. so it's like and, and i will pay for it this. use it yes this this is the one thing i will say because we all hear about you know government overspending and what are our tax dollars doing and they're spending on stupid crap and this and that the library is the one thing that you are guaranteed that your tax money, and I and I'm and I'm speaking as both a librarian and a taxpayer and all these things. Mm-hmm. I take that seriously. I take that as someone has paid this money. Yes, they had to. Yes, it stinks because I hate tax day just as much as the next person. But I take that seriously as I don't want to just waste this on something dumb that isn't going to get used. I want mm-hmm. to, you know, be a good steward of that money. And there's and every other librarian that I've worked with has expressed similar sentiments. It's like, this is money that has been entrusted to us to do something with that is going to benefit our community. And and yes, we get people complaining about, oh, why is this book in here or this thing or that thing or, and and, you know, we can go, and and, you know, censorship has been like, it's it's, it's, it's the dead horse that won't stop getting. Um, People have been trying to censor stuff since the day that Gutenberg yeah the printing press although if although not before some, some of the some of the way that that, that the ala the american library association that has has promoted it i there i i have some beef with that but that's that's a me thing um just because they're they're not very they're not very even about how they they handle that um depending mm. on certain things and and i have talked they to are, parents. The, i have the, the ala though the american library session they are a very good resource though for a they, lot they of are. things they are there there are there are some things and and some of the way that they talked about how parents because there, there are concerns especially in schools but but a school library and a public library are two very different things. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I actually do agree. It's like you need to have age appropriate things in your school library. But a public library, because this was always, okay, maybe I will get into this. Because when I learned about Banned Books Week and it was at my school and they were like, oh, someone doesn't want you to read Harry Potter. Well, it wasn't Harry Potter back then because Harry Potter wasn't published yet. Cause it was This was before, right before Harry Potter, I think. But I'll just use that as an example. But I'm like, but you could go to someone's house and read it, or you could, or you could, you know, go to the go to the bookstore and buy it, or you know, like we had the book orders that we could that we could order from you know, Scholastic Book Order, or the book fair and stuff like that. It's like it's not a banned book because you can still get it. But then there were some books that, like a few years ago, that like you know, can- cancel culture were coming after, and they were actually pulled from publication, and ALA did said nothing about any of that. So that part pissed me off. So mm. I'm just kind of like, you better apply what you're saying to about these parents who are mad that that there's, you know, a, you know, sexually explicit content in their elementary school or middle school libraries. You better you better apply that same passion for sense for anti censorship that you do with this other mm. bullshit. So you know, with you know, Twitter screeching about certain books that were that were they were pressuring the authors and the publishers to pull for publication and they never did so that that part that you know just out you know if you're gonna you know censorship is censorship and i don't care who it is or what you're coming from or who or, or what what the concern is because one of these is not like the other but anyway mm. that's for a different thing where was i um that being anyway, said though that if you do said, have concerns you can and, take and we, those to yes the people at the library. Yes, but and do it do nicely. Not, do it nicely, <laughs> and I will say, if any of my fellow librarians are listening, I would plead with you. I would love to do a presentation, but I don't think it'd be accepted. It is the page uh, called "The Patron Is Not Your Enemy"? Mm-hmm. Because I have actually had parents. Who have, because there's been this whole big kerfuffle about stuff in schools, 
I had a parent come to me as a mom and her kids, her, she had teenage kids, and they actually volunteered at the library. And, and once she said their name, like, oh, I know who your kids are. And she's like, I don't want them bringing books home from the library because, you know, some of this is inappropriate. And I was like, look, but, but she also was like, I don't want to ban books. I don't want to, because because the news had covered it as, oh, these these ignorant you know, parents who are trying to keep these books out of schools and how dare they do that, you know, putting them in this bad light, which I hate because I'm like, you're making these parents look like the bad guys and they're mm -hmm. not. They are, they are concerned about their kids and there are a lot of reasons to be concerned about their children. I'm a parent. I'm a librarian. I see both sides, but I've also seen some, some discourse from librarians and yes, it is frustrating, especially when a parent is hopping mad and they're ready to jump down your throat. And and they're not mad at you personally. They're mad at this situation. And mm -hmm. I can see why they're upset and why they're angry. But I can also see parents who are like scared, scared to death to even just speak up because this mother was like, I don't know who to talk to. Like, can I talk to you about this? And she was like, I could like tell like her voice was shaking. She was ready to cry. But she didn't know what else to do. And I'm just, I am just so grateful that I was the one who talked to her, not to toot my own horn and say, look at me, I'm so awesome. But I got it. And I was like, I get it. And yes, there are some books in here that might not be what your child wants. And every kid is different. Every kid, like, I mean, I, I'm, every person is different. Like I've, I've said before, I do not like gory horror movies. I don't like scary haunted houses jared wants to take me to a haunted house one of these years i'm just like Ugh, i don't think i can do it but i like the haunted mansion and i like tower of terror so it just kind of depends and ever and kids are like that too mm -hmm. and i just finally told this this mom i was like i gave her you know, i had a business card and i said look if you need help if you and your kids need help to find books that you are interested in that are appropriate that you're comfortable with them checking out i will I I will do reader's advisory for you. I will help you find things that are appropriate and, and that that you're that you're good with. And if that is acceptable to you, because yeah, because she was just like, you know, some of these books that are in the teen area probably ought to be adult. And I'm like, yeah, I mean, I can see where you're coming from with that. And you know, and, and, you know, as a professional, I couldn't say whether. I couldn't really say whether I agree with her or not. Some of them I actually do on a personal level. Some of them like, eh, it's on the border. Whatever. Depending on, depending on your books. kid. Yeah. You know, and, and, and young yeah, but I was glad. You know, yeah. kids being kids being killed for sport in the Hunger Games. That is true. May not be appropriate for your child, you know? Yeah. Even though yeah. technically that's a young adult book. So Yeah. Or, you know, Five Nights at Freddy's. Like, I mean, that's a big movie right now and they're mm -hmm. both there. And you think about it like, oh gosh, this is like child murder and these ghosts um possessing the these animatronics. Like that is that is scary shit, man. Mm -hmm. But it appeals but because of the games and everything appeals to the kids. So, you know, again, know your child. And I'm like, I'm just, I'm like, I'm just glad you give a damn enough to come down here and be like, look, I just want to know, I, I just want to know what my kid is reading. How can I help them? What resources are available to me? Mm -hmm. And I am like 100% happy to help a parent who is upset about perhaps something their child read, and, you know? Or maybe even the kids upset because kids will, will read something and they're like, I didn't realize this is what that was. And I mean, I had a, when I was eight years old, uh, I went to a slumber party and somebody's older sister said, hey, let's watch Candyman. And I had no idea what that was. <laughs> and we all watched it and I was like, scarred for life. <laughs> uh, like, yeah, I'm, horror movie comes from. yeah, I'm a 40 year old woman, although I wasn't 40 at the time, but like, uh mm -hmm. when i went to dallas several years uh -huh. ago and i went to the george w bush presidential library and uh -huh. and one of the sections was about when she was first lady barbara bush her big thing was reading was one mm -hmm. of her big initiatives so there was a section about you know 
her you know what she did to help you know encourage you know young kids at a young age to to hopefully develop mm -hmm. a love of reading and there was a bunch of books that uh you know they had out so that you know people could pick them up and, and look at them and one of them was where the red fern grows and i was flipping through it and if you've ever read that book you know it's not a happy ending no it's for not I, mean, I, character. I found myself in tears standing in mm -hmm. the george bush presidential library flipping through a copy of where the red fern grows at 30 something years old so yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, and I love where the red fern goes. I had a dog named Little Ann growing up, but yes, that book is sad. Oh my god, it'll yeah. wreck you. <laughs> it will, it will. Um, but yeah, like, like, and I think a lot of parents are just like, I, I think, I think the, the debate is kind of getting framed a little dishonestly because people want to have like a, a cause or a thing and a bad guy, and I really hate that. And and my whole thing is like, and 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 this year for Banned Books Week, our our system mm -hmm. actually reframed it because there has been such controversy, and they didn't do it like banned books, like ooh these books are forbidden. It's like no, we're calling it Let Freedom Read, and mm -hmm. it was just like, what are your favorite books? And like, I mean, earlier we had feedback from Aaron because after because we talked about Little Shop of Horrors, and he said he hated that movie and the play or the musical and all that and i was like okay that's great that's fine you you didn't like it like what you want don't like mm -hmm. what you don't like it's okay mm -hmm. and I just because you like, doesn't like it doesn't mean that you have to keep yeah. anyone else from liking it yeah or because mm -hmm. or because i like it means i have to force someone else to like it and it's obviously mm -hmm. not their thing so it, it all goes both ways so I think the whole censorship thing, because and it gets it gets so because it is it, it is a hot button thing, and you know in the past like book burnings and you know you know censoring of ideas and things like that has been historically a really touchy subject, mm -hmm. and also because it gets clicks and ratings for the for the ghoulish news media, it's like whoa we're not letting kids read books. It's like well yeah I don't want my child reading Madonna's sex like come on. Mm -hmm. Have some, have some sense, you dumbass. Yeah, <laughs> um, and that's a, and that's the biggest thing, yeah. and that's what the you know, and mm -hmm. it, hopefully and librarians, librarians. I'm like, I, I am, I am, I will lead the charge on this. I am more yeah. than happy to help you find age appropriate, or mm -hmm. maybe it's not for kids. Maybe it's for you. Maybe you want a mystery that isn't or a thriller that isn't super gory because i've had people who are like i want a mystery and i want a thriller sort of thing but i don't want to read about a lot of you know sex and violence and language mm -hmm. and stuff like that there are clean reads for a reason and lots of people lots of people love those and that's great i'm mm -hmm. like there's an audience and a book for everybody mm -hmm. so so please talk to your librarians if maybe if you've had a bad experience with one We'll talk to another one because that that's the other thing is yes a librarian may be at the desk may look like they're busy and don't feel shy about coming up and like hey i have a question because we're because yeah we, there's a lot of stuff we have to do and i and sometimes i take work out on the desk there's always work that i'm like okay i can set this down and help the person in front of me and i will say and i've and our our public services librarian um she when we like she she says this to me a lot when I like take over for her on the desk. We switch and she goes, I actually had a, a good reader's advisory, a good reference question. Because a lot of times she gets questions like, how does the printer work? And how do you log on to the computer? Or, you know, where's the bathroom? Stuff like that. But like when someone comes and says, hey, how do I do this? Or how do I find this book? Or do you have, you know, or do you have recommendations? Those are the fun questions, the real meaty ones that we're like, ooh, yes, I will help you find this. This is gonna be mm -hmm. so much fun. So we get a kick out of it, honestly. <laughs> so never feel like you're you're going to inter you're interrupting a librarian. Never feel like you're taking them something away from more from from something you might think is more important. Because we're here to serve the patrons. We're here to serve the people who come up and ask us questions. That's a job. Mm -hmm. And 
where nothing is more important than the person in front of us and whatever their question, comment, concern is. And, and you know, just, just come in and also behave yourself. Mm-hmm. And that, that just means, you know, don't, don't, you know, walk around with, with no pants on or something yeah. <laughs> like that. It does, it does happen. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so it's just, but I don't know. if you I, if I, you do want to make your librarian's life just a little easier, if you're looking for a book, try to remember more than just the color of the cover. Yes. <laughs> oh my gosh. Well, no, I, and I have done that too because I was looking for a book for a display I wanted to do, and I was like, "Oh, what was the name of that book? I know the cover was red." And then as I said it, I'm just like, "I'm a dork." <laughs> <But yeah. laughs> <laughs> like, if you could, if I, you could remember like a character name, <laughs> yes. Even if you don't know the title and you don't remember the author, but yeah, if you remember the character is it name, fiction, nonfiction, oh, yeah. is it a you know is it is it set in a like a historical time period or like uh, you know what's the, a, any any proper noun that you can think of? Whether it's a a, a person, something that can go into a search play. engine. Yes. <laughs> Because sometimes it's like that's all I've got, yeah. Or you know, or you know, a scenario that, that's going on in the book. Because um, there, there, there have been some where people come up. I read this book so many years ago, and I remember this happening and this happening, and I kind of plug that in, and they're like, and I find, you mm. know, four or five possibilities, and they're like, oh, it's that one, or you know, it's, there's it's, also it's a sometimes. Reddit for that. Yes. Oh, I'm sure what's is. that book and you can tell them mm. as much information as you can remember and odds are the collective brain of reddit will figure it out for you yes yes the internet is a wonderful thing but also can be a fraught thing that's why we have libraries yeah <laughs> but hey you know um, if you're thinking of that book and your library is not open you, you can go to reddit <laughs> reddit reddit is an option that is they're perfect. almost like yeah. your library <laughs> Just a little more prankstery. Yeah, sometimes. Oh man, I've oh, I've, I've found that some of the the like the libraries threat the libraries Reddit is is pretty good. Um, mm-hmm. you, you can get a chuckle of the librarians that have you know their stories. Uh, you know, <laughs> <laughs> but the the patrons that have questions, they're usually very nice about. Mm-hmm answering you know people's questions and not making them feel mm-hmm. stupid or anything and you know yeah, the, the what's I'm that like... book the what's that book read it's not bad either because i actually have used it where i could like <laughs> remember a little bit of the plot and within probably less than an hour of me posting i had the title and the author so there you go <laughs> yeah li- librarians are really nice I mean, as long as you're not making a mess or causing mm-hmm. trouble or, I mean, yes, there's, there's, I mean, public, you're working with the public, anything can happen. Um, yeah. But it, yeah, I, I mean, I've had to field some very interesting questions in my time and sometimes I just kind of write them down like, this one's nuts. Like, there was one guy who wanted to bike from Salt Lake City to Cheyenne, Wyoming without getting on the freeway or any highways. <laughs> and I'm like, you gonna go you're gonna go you're gonna go through the mountains? I don't know if your mountain bike can handle that. <laughs> He's like, give it a map to show that? I'm like oh, but even gosh. with I mean I mean a bicycle probably doesn't belong on the highway, but no, probably not. I could I could kind of see where he was coming from, but at the same time yeah, it's like I could, is but... that even a distance that somebody would actually want to bike? Unless I don't you're like know. Was he training for the Tour de France? I don't know. Or the yeah, there's like the Logan to Jack. Or an Iron Man that's competition. Not, yeah, that's, that's like <laughs> triathlon. Because I will, I will say like try like all the ways that I know of to get from Utah to Wyoming. I mean, and uh, I can't remember if this was when, what time of year it was. I, I mean, if it was like fall or su- fall or winter, you're you're better off just waiting for the spring thaw, my friend. Because mm-hmm. Wyoming, the Wyoming passes are nuts. Um, even in the best of times but yeah I was just like why are you biking to Cheyenne I don't get it but you know everybody's got their reasons I'm not here to judge mm-hmm. uh, they're just okay. here to help 
I am here to help here. to the best of my knowledge. You're and sometimes, here to reference. <laughs> sometimes, the, sometimes the answer to the question just doesn't. Mm-hmm. Sometimes, sometimes it does. I will do my best. So anyway. So did we hit all hit all the highlights? I mean yeah, I mean without getting into like a lot of like the technical Oh yeah, yeah. stuffs then uh-huh. you know. Absolutely I think I, mean, there's, I think, there's think lots so, of, so Yeah. I mean ba- basically the you know, best thing I can do is like familiarize yourself with your library, go to your library, make friends with some of the librarians because they mm-hmm. love that. Yeah. And mm-hmm. just just go yeah, volunteer if you can, if you have the time. Our volunteers, we adore them because they'll they'll do they they help us out with so many things that we we need to do, but we just don't have time or you know it, it it's nice to know that we we have volunteers also. It's great on our resume. So mm-hmm. if you're trying to do that, um, but yeah, you know, get on their website. I tell people. You can't break anything, so just get in there and mess around and see what's over here. Um, yeah, I'm looking at some of the other some of these other things you've got on here. Um, yeah, on your on your on your library's website, look up their their databases, their subscription services, see what they offer. There's, I mean, I, I feel like the digital services we we promote them as much as we can, but I don't think they're as well used as as we might want them to be. I so, had to practically beg Chauncey to finally go get a library card <laughs> just Chauncey. just for the digital stuff because he's he's not a big book reader but he uh-huh. loves to listen to stuff oh there's plenty of stuff to listen to and I was like go get a library card and you can there's streaming movies and mm-hmm. some of them they've got like online comic books so if you're a comic book oh, reader yeah. and digital does count as reading yes it does uh no audio books count as is. reading too yes audio books count as reading yep i will uh, die on that hill yes but he was all like he had uh, he mentioned he mentioned he he wanted to to read some book and he because he there was one book that like he had decided he wanted to read it and he bought it and then he was like i'm also reading he's also he's like i'm also listening to the audio version and i was like okay okay but he paid for the audio version i was like download libby <laughs> please mm-hmm. Yeah, and I was like, "Here's how you find what you're looking for. Here's how you check them out. This is how long you you know you get them for, and you can listen to them there." And he's like, "You just saved me like twenty bucks from having to buy an audio." Yes, mm-hmm. I did. You're welcome. I mean, Libby can't get everything like, no. like the, some of the Audible exclusive stuff. You're never yeah, gonna get that's... through Libby. But yeah, and that like I've been able publisher. to get like brand new release. Like I listened to Prince Harry's book like within a couple of weeks of it being released. Yeah, when yeah. it was still the hot thing at the time. So yeah, you know. the, the yeah the the publishers are very funny about ebooks, especially if it's an Audible exclusive or an Amazon or or yeah because there was this whole big thing about the publishers like well you can't do an ebook until after it's you know six months been out and we're just kind of like uh-huh because they're like well libraries are costing us so much money i'm like dude libraries are keeping you guys afloat because we mm-hmm. buy so much of your stuff that nobody else mm-hmm. is buying so yeah i have a beef with publishers but i won't get into that here because we're having too much fun um yeah. But yeah just you know libby has got some great stuff Hoopla's got great stuff. I really need to to familiarize myself with Canopy. I think I think the City Library has it. We don't, but I I've, I've heard tell that they that it's one of those things. They're constantly looking at oh, what are all these things? What should we try out? Mm-hmm. So you know, watch watch the watch the space. We'll do it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think that one's a, a movie streaming service. Yes, like I said, I gotta go. I gotta go familiarize myself with it. Because it's not one that, that it's a fairly it's a newer one, I think. Yeah, because um, yeah, because hoop hoopla is audiobooks, ebooks, comics, movies, TVs, magazines, mm-hmm. and music. So, yes. and you could use it on your computer or your phone. 
your TV mm-hmm. if it's if, if it's one of those those smart ones. Yeah. Um, but yeah, uh, Canopy is uh, just movies. So yeah, um, and and you know yeah, it might not be the latest and greatest you know Hollywood blockbuster, but there are some there are some Hey, gems when you're there. doing a podcast like Gold Standard, you're not oh, necessarily yeah. doing the latest and greatest. So that is true, <laughs> and you know there's a lot of old stuff out there that is totally worth your time. So give it a mm-hmm. shot. Mm-hmm. Um. So yeah. Um. I'm just trying to think. I think I, I mean, I, that's everything I could think of. And I mean, I, uh, like I said, I could talk everybody's ear off. Yeah, me that, too. But I don't want to, I don't want to, you know, we don't want this to turn into the three hour once upon a time repeat. Yeah. <laughs> so maybe we'll do it. We, we could, we could try to do a part two, but I, I feel like we hit the highlights either way. But yeah, just go to your library, look at, look up stuff, look on the website, talk to your librarians. You know, just look around and see what they offer. And, you know, you're going to save yourself a ton of money, first off. You're going to be, yeah. I, like, I, I would almost, you know, because, again, it's going to vary across the board. And, obviously, mm-hmm. libraries in larger cities with more people and, therefore, more taxes going into the system mm-hmm. are going to be able to purchase subscriptions and stuff to more things. But. I will say that odds are, if you are not a patron of your local library, Mm -hmm. if you go in and just ask them, what do I get if I have a library card with you guys, you will genuinely be surprised at the answer you get. and And even if you are in a smaller town that doesn't have as much resources, um, your state library covers so much like our our state library has a great digital website at, with resources and i mean it's mostly like homework and database type stuff but it, i think they also have access to some audiobooks and, and digital stuff too so don't discount what your state library has to offer if you're in an mm-hmm. area where there's bookmobile um and that kind of thing i love the bookmobile i always have a special place in my heart because that was what i had when i was growing up out in the sticks and yeah, it was great. It was wonderful. And so we had a good time with it. Um, so yeah, we love libraries. They're fun and mm-hmm. so team. All right. So uh, if uh, any, are we good? Anybody else? Brittany, did you have anything you wanted to chime in with? Uh, not not you know, it's been a hot like, minute. Like, since I know everything. Yeah. <laughs> I know it's been a yeah. while since, since you, you, since you were, uh, employed by a library so yeah well just want to make sure well speaking of if any of our listeners want to chime in about their favorite feature of the library or if they have any questions or stuff like that if you want to send in feedback mm-hmm. send us an email shoot us an email at fiveishfangirls at gmail.com you can also visit our website which is the fiveishfangirls.com and that has links to all of our social media uh stuff that you can uh comment on we have links on our um, for like our show notes and stuff that we've mentioned here, so you can check all that out. Uh, we also have um, a YouTube channel, which again, if you are wanting to see the PowerPoint, or Rachel said she'd send it to you if you feel so inclined. But it, this will be on a video on the YouTube channel. As well. you can leave comments there, follow us, all that great stuff, and also support us if you can through our Patreon or our merch shop. Uh, again, links to that are on our website. So check that out if you feel so inclined. There's some fun stuff on, on, on our shop as well. And of course, thank you for listening. Thank you for being our audience, our supporters, our little community we have here. It's just, it's good. It, it's mm-hmm. just, this is fun. This is awesome. And it's just good to know that there are people enjoying what we do. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you again. And, uh, Support your local library. Support your local library. Mm-hmm. And, tell them we sent you, know, you. They won't know who yeah. who we are, but tell them anyway. <laughs> yes. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, and you know, and even if all you do is just go in and find a quiet place to sit in the corner and read, that's what it's there for. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Heck, just go in to use the bathroom if you need to. I've done that. That is, yeah, that is that is true. Where we're next to a park, and the, our park has a lot of like bathrooms sprinkled throughout, but you know, mm. it's, it's a park bathroom. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. 
It's totally okay. I was out Why running around it? and I needed to go to the bathroom and I knew that theirs was clean. So, yeah. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> hey. All right. Oh, with. Oh, a little bit of housekeeping. I'll, I will try to remember to post something on social media next week, unlike last time. Uh, but in this case, we know it's we know ahead of time there will not be a new show next week <laughs> uh so uh because i will be out of town i am going to see metallica this weekend Ooh. um and one of the uh, it's two shows friday night and sunday night and we are not driving home after the sunday night show because we are not crazy um so yeah, we're we're we are staying overnight Sunday night uh in Detroit. We will be in Detroit. So if anybody in Detroit, hit me up. Um Detroit, Rock and uh yeah, so but we we're not gonna necessarily either rush home on Monday either. So because I'm sure we'll but we Chante and I are both gonna be meddled hungover. Um, oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so get, get get home safely and yes. in one and more <laughs> We're gonna things. take our sweet time coming home because it's been a while since either of us have had a long weekend. Uh ah. so that will be that will be nice. But yeah, so once once uh once once I get home and recovered from two nights of, of Metallica. Uh, we will go back to our our usual schedule the f Monday after. So, but no right. show next week. But that you know, it gives you time to get caught up in all the other stuff. So, yeah. alrighty. Well, so. Have fun Rachel. out with that. Yes. <laughs> oh, Give Detroit with. my regard. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> with that, we shall sign off for this week. This is Brittany and Belder saying goodnight. This is Chrissy saying goodnight from Salt Lake City. And this is Rachel in Indianapolis, Indiana. I will leave you with these words from Neil Gaiman. An interview <laughs> he did uh, with I Love Libraries. <laughs> so, little story he told about his early love of libraries so when i was from i think the age of seven onwards my parents would drive me to the local library in the morning during the summer which is where i wanted to be during my school hours and i would just sit there going through the card file it had an old-fashioned card file and i would go through the card file looking for words like witches robots outer space ghosts monsters giants magic anything like that and i would read everything i could in those categories and i'd read anything that looked interesting but I remember the joy of being able to talk to the librarian about the things I wanted to read that they did not have. The library was a space where I could go as a seven-year-old, as an eight-year-old, and where I was treated with respect. I was treated as one of the people who was there. I could talk to the librarians, and I did. Most of the time, they'd just ignore me. I'd be sitting reading my book, and I was the happiest kid that could be in the corner reading. But when I did interact with them, they interacted with me as a customer, as a patron, as somebody who was entitled to be there, deserved to be there, had every right to be in that space. Thank you for listening to The Five-ish Fangirls. Please visit thefiveishfangirls.com for details on how to further support the show, along with information on our nonprofit, Fangirls Give Back. We love our five-ish fam and appreciate all of your feedback, shares, and encouragement. Remember to keep letting your geek flag fly.